presents the 1985 National League Championship Series. Today, from Bush Memorial Stadium, the Los Angeles Dodgers versus the St. Louis Cardinals. Brought to you by Light Beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. By Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By IBM typewriters. No matter how you look at typing, wear your type. And by Century 21 Real Estate Organization. St. Louis, Missouri, the gateway to the West. Welcome to Bush Stadium and the third game of the National League Championship Series between the visiting Los Angeles Dodgers and the home team, the St. Louis Cardinals. Hi, everybody. I'm Ben Scully, along with Joe Garagiola. The atmosphere is a little heavy here with the Cardinals down by two after the Dodgers had everything go their way in Los Angeles. You know, Ben, I think we will be able to find out if there is a thing as a home field advantage because uh, the Cardinals are going to need all the help they can. Uh, they didn't play the first two games like the Cardinals that we saw all year. Uh, the Dodgers know it better than anybody. The Dodgers have dominated. The Cardinals are going to need that one big effort. Now, whether it comes from the pitching of Cox or whether it comes from the hitting of uh, Clark or whoever, but they need one big effort. A friend of mine summed it up as far as St. Louis. He said, home is where the hop is, and it goes more than once in this town. Right. The hop, of course, being on the AstroTurf. It'll make a difference because uh, if, if you saw that play Ozzie Smith tried to make, uh, he couldn't make it in Dodger Stadium. He makes it easier here. In fact, he makes it, I think, 99 out of 100 times. The ball will get to him sooner, and the thing they'll have to watch is it has been raining uh, last night. It rained beautiful right now. Uh, that ball's going to skid, so if they're not careful, look, it, it may get by him. Well, for the Dodgers, one other thought. If the Cardinal runners get aboard, Bob Welch, has had four balks called against him this year, more than anybody else on the club. A balk has not been apparent in the series, and it could put a little extra pressure on him today. I wouldn't be surprised if Whitey Herzog starts complaining early about quick pitching, both on uh, Welsh and Royce when he pitches, just to alert the umpires. That that's a good point about the balk, because he will make that quick move, and, and he may come close to balking, if not balk. Needless to say, the wheels are turning. We'll get to the starting lineups and a lot more, all coming up right after this. You know, one of the best things about being an ex-big leaguer is getting freebies to the game. Call the front office, bingo. And once these fans recognize me, I probably won't even have to pay for my light beer from Miller. Down it! <laughs> I love them. These fans know I drink light because it's less filling and it tastes great. Good seats, huh? You're in the wrong seat, buddy. Come on. I must be in the front come on, row. Come on, come on. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Good seats, eh, buddy? He missed the tag! He missed the tag! Here's the way the Dodgers stack up offensively, and of course it will be a shock to many. Leading off, not Mariana Duncan with the bad knee and foot unable to play. Dave Anderson at shortstop. Kenny Landro in center field, followed by Bill Madlock at third. Pedro Guerrero in the cleanup spot in left, backed up by Mike Marshall in right. Mike Sosha had a big two games in Los Angeles. He'll be behind the plate. Greg Brock, who had a two-run home run against Joaquin Andujar, will be at first base. Steve Sachs, who had the first Dodger hit in each of the first two games, will be at second. And the pitcher, Bob Welch. He'll be the key man, Danny Cox. Talk all you want about defense. They need a big effort, and they're looking for it from Danny Cox. Danny Cox, an 18-game winner would have been the leading winner on 15 major league teams this year. 2 and 0. Oh. And remember we've talked about quality starts. He was third in the league in quality starts. He made 26 starts where he went 6 innings and allowed 3 runs or less. All 3. The only two pitches who were better, Dwight Gooden and John Tudor. He just has the basic pitches fastball that tails and sinks hard curve an excellent change and he walks Dave Anderson on four which is a switch in the first two games the first seven Dodger hitters were retired in order 
So Anderson aboard on the walk. Betting second. Cox has walked four as a high, and he's done that four times in games this year. He has an average move, and he's average unloading to the plate, and uh, Dodgers have been running, so look out. Here we go. The absence of Duncan points up about the Dodgers running, too. Not only did the Dodgers steal 12 out of 14 during the regular season against the Cardinals, Duncan was four for four, but they don't have it. The Dodgers are three out of four in the championship series. Line drive down the right field line, fair ball and in the corner. Anderson is on his way to third, and Amalfitano is going to hold him on a double by Kenny Landro. And the Dodgers are in business here in the first inning. Second and third, nobody out. And Kenny Landro had two doubles Thursday's game. So that's his third double in the series. My point out the two doubles in Thursday's game. Fastballs out away from him. This was a slow curveball, and he pulled it down the line. So he just has a hot bat. And when you have a hot bat, they can throw bowling balls up there, and you're going to double them. No chance to make a play. Now, Anderson, he sees the ball is going to drop. He's thinking scoring all the way. Van Slyke in right field plays the ball well, and with nobody out, obviously, Amalfitano is going to hold him up. He doesn't want to run him out of a possible big inning. Early in the game, the infield is back. Ground ball to Clark, and he almost caught Anderson coming, and then Anderson went back. So Madline grounding to Clark, one out. Anderson almost commits. He kind of thought that ball was going to go through there. You can see him, and now he's heading right back because he knows he shouldn't have gotten that far off. You have to make sure that ball gets through the infield with less than two outs. Now here's an interesting point as far as numbers are concerned. Pedro Guerrero lifetime against Danny Cox is four for ten. You have first base open. Mike Marshall is one for nine. Will you put him on? I think they'll put him on to set up the double play but I asked about it because they had not been putting him on. They're going to put him on then. Yeah. And the Cardinals really believe watching Guerrero hit that his hand is good enough that he's going to hit the ball long and deep and that's why they've been pitching to him. I said well I watched him in batting practice and he hit it to the opposite field and they said yeah but watch him at the end there. So they'd still fear Guerrero bad hand or no bad hand but this time they're just setting up the DP. Marshall one for eight in the league championship series and one for nine against Danny Cox in his career. The big thing with Mike he's usually a feast of famine hitter. He uppercuts the ball a lot. He either strikes out and he pays a big price there or he gets the fly ball. But the Cardinals are hoping that he'll hit one on the ground. There's no doubt the Cardinals need a big lift in this entire series and it's come early right here. If they get the double play how that is really going to lift them because right now they're looking to get blown out. And they've already gotten a big lift by getting Bill Madlock. So we'll watch Marshall statistically again to finish up the point. He's the toughest Dodger to double up because of his swing. He grounded into only eight double plays. He struck out over 130 times. So bases loaded, one out, first inning. A very, very important point right now. Hard breaking ball on one. Danny Cox is a big guy, and he appears to be throwing harder than he actually is, which works on his side. He's got a great change, and he's got a good curveball. He's looking for the ground ball, and he'll be leaning towards that curveball. He started in breaking ball on one. They're going to cost him another. So as we said, feast or famine with Mike Marshall. Jack Clark is going in now to remind him you got him two strikes and no balls. Now you can set up a pitch. You got him uh, where you want him, so work on him now. Something that didn't happen in the end of hard game. And Marshall, who is such an intense hitter, many times will chase the ball out of the strike zone. 0 oh and 2. And instead, he loops it to Ozzy in the runner's hole. So if nothing else, it finishes up the thought that he doesn't hit into double plays. And now the batter will be Mike Sosha. And I think Marshall was out in front and cracked his bat on that. You can call it a line drive only to talk about the trajectory, not the swiftness of the flight of the ball. Three breaking balls. And now here comes Smith in and Clark. And you're just simply reminding him you're not out of it yet. Make sure you know what you're doing. 
And Sosha known to jump on that first pitch. Mike Sosha, a contact hitter and a very good, knowledgeable hitter as far as the strike zone is concerned. He is second on the Dodger Club in walks. So, of course, Clark talking to Cox about you've got to make him good to this man. Sosha in the series is two for seven and has one RBI. But as you said, Joe, this is a very big moment, and it oh. started after Landros double, the Cardinals were in trouble. When Madlock grounded out, they breathed a sigh of relief. You could feel the weight slipping off their shoulders when they get Marshall. Now, if they get out of it with Socia, this place will go wild. Oh, it's a case of keeping the air in the balloon, a base hit, and all the air comes out. Out of a stretch with the bases loaded. Strike. It'll be one breaking ball after another. At 6-4, as Daryl Porter says, he is an awesome sight standing on the mound, and you expect everything for him to throw to be hard, but it's not. There's the fastball. One and one. He showed him the fastball inside in a good spot. When you're that big, believe me, from the batter's box, you get the feeling you're hitting uphill. Danny Cox facing a moment of truth here in the first inning and Socia asking for time. Dave Anderson at third, Kenny Landro at second, Pedro Guerrero at first. Two out, no score. Still another breaking ball. So he's only thrown him one fastball, and he missed with that. One and two. Be interesting to see if he goes after him or if he sets it up for the two-two. One ball and two strikes. High chopper, and it's going to be down to Clark. Tricky bounce, fair ball, and they're out of the inning. Be a different Cardinal ball club that will be coming up in the bottom of the first inning. As the Dodgers come back, Vince Coleman leading off in left field and the league's leading hitter in center, Willie McGee. A hundred RBI man at second base in Tommy Herr and the hammer. Jack Clark with 22 home runs at first base. Andy Van Slyke who starts against right handers in right field. Terry Pendleton will be at third. Darrell Porter behind the plate. Ozzie Smith at short, and we have just seen a lot of Danny Cox. That's what they needed, and Danny Cox gave it to him in the first inning. Defensively, Guerrero, Landro, and Marshall in the outfield. Madlock, Anderson, Sachs, Brock in the infield. Socia behind the plate. Welsh on the mound. Key man on that defense is right at shortstop. Shortstop, a key position uh, anytime, but especially on artificial surface. And here's Dave Anderson, who has not been playing shortstop that much. Uh, Duncan out with the injury. So Dave, a spotlight will be on him very brightly. And the last time he played on artificial surface was in September in Houston, and it was as a third baseman. So. Dave Anderson got a little heat on him. Bob Welch, you can see his record. He had two starts before the middle of June. Then he was 9-1 and one by mid-August. He has struck out a high of 9-1 in one game, and that was against the Cardinals. He is 2-0 and oh in two starts with an earned run average of 1 against St. Louis this year. Right. In the first two games, one of the big reasons why the Cardinals have been so quiet offensively, Coleman and McGee combined for a 167 batting average. Hit, and that's going to be down the line. Base hit. Coleman will hold up. Here's where we're going to get a chance to see Bob Welsh's move. Now, uh, it's... Uh, yeah. He throws the first base a lot. He he kind of he'll come close to balking. That's the best way I can put it. Well, as we said at the opening, he has committed more balks than any other Dodger pitcher. Four. That's not earth shaking, but still there isn't anybody else on the staff close to him, and he'll be tested almost immediately. And as soon as he comes close, Whitey will be out to ask about it. Coleman has an easier time measuring his distance now. He'll get one foot on the artificial surface and one foot on the dirt. He knows exactly where to go. He's got it measured. He has stolen second base 79 times this year. And Bob Wells 
will lose his concentration by throwing too much to first base, and they worry about that. Welch has a better move than, for instance, Oral Hershiser. So what Hershiser did was pretty much keep the game under control after the first two innings. We'll see whether Welch can be tested. As we said, he has pitched exceptionally well against the Cardinals in his two previous outings. That was interesting. He was trying to catch him between that uh, horseman's move he was making over there, trying to dig in like, like much like you see a horse doing. Uh, Coleman now working on it, as you can see. And he has to call time if he's going to start digging in like that because, well, Welsh almost caught him between digs. And meanwhile, McGee patiently waiting at the plate. The other night, you remember, Hershiser threw over nine times to first base. That's a strike. So far, here comes Whitey. Yeah, this will start. This will be, we set the stage for you at the start. He's going to be talking about balking all day today. He was ready for this. Uh, Welsh has a reputation, so has Jerry Royce, and if nothing else, he's delivering the message, and the rule book says he has to stop, and I want you to stop him, and that's just all he's saying to him. He was ready. He had the gun loaded, and he's got a point. Make him stop, he said. Make him stop. That's all he wants him to do. The rule book says he has to stop. part of it he didn't stop I remember at one time in the rule book it said you had to stop for one complete second and boy that caused as much of a rhubarb as anything trying to guess exactly what one complete second was oh and one and we're off to a noisy start at push Dodgers load the bases and come up empty and the Cardinals now have Coleman single, Herzog hollering about Bork, and the count 0 and 1 to Willie McGee. And he was off the rubber, so he has made five throws to first base. You get a feeling that this one's going to be a wild one. Oh, it has to be. Whitey's got a light of fire under his ball club, and he's done a pretty good job. He's already put a lot of gas on the fire. Oh, and one to count. And there goes Coleman. A pitch out. The throw. He's in there. He goes. And you saw him lift his foot as Joe Morgan talked about in the pregame show and what a psychological lip not so much the stolen base is that they were able to do it on the pitch out they have just taken the running game back from the Dodgers and it all begins with just a whole lot of things the argument by Whitey uh, the steal on the block and it's not even close on a pitch out you know it's interesting to me Coleman went in head first you remember the other night he went in feet first and he spiked Mariano Duncan one and one to Willie McGee. Anderson trying to bird dog him. And the bunt is missed. If you're wondering about Coleman, you have to look out. He has stolen 26 out of 31 tries of third base. And he has stolen second and third in the same inning 11 times. So he might not be finished running yet. Bush Stadium is a sea of cardinal red. Just as Dodger Stadium looked like ocean blue. And you get the feeling that the Cardinals are home. And first to get off the big hook in the first inning when the Dodgers loaded the bases. And now to get a base hit and a stolen base by their leadoff man. Joints jumping. One and two. Two and two to Willie McGee. Coming into this game, the Dodgers were nine for 19 opportunities in getting people home. The Cardinals were only three for 14. This is a superstitious Tommy Lasorda. You see that straw in his mouth? He happened to pick one up in the first inning of the first game, and the Dodgers won it, and he's chewing that same straw, the last straw, I guess. He has Bueller to load extra ones. Three and two. 
Just like it was an important inning for the Cardinals to get out of it, it's important now that they put a run on the scoreboard with Coleman stealing second base. So McGee, if he does make the out, they have to pick up the base. So a full count to Willie McGee. And he's walking. Sosha trying to settle his pitcher down because this is the Cardinal game. The track meet begins. You know, they've been described many ways. Uh, I hold silver in a cloud of dust is one way. Andohar said it was Jack Clark and seven leadoff hitters. And it's the Cardinal game. They get the Jack Rabbits on, and they're on, and now here they come. Well, as you probably know, the Cardinals have grounded into the fewest double plays, and Whitey has seen Tommy Herr ground into only six and only two as a left-handed batter. So the Dodgers are going to come up with two against this fella. They're really going to have to pull off a miracle. And Jack Clark is on deck. Madlock has shortened up at third, and the fake by Welch. In the first game of the series, the Cardinals had two men on in the first inning, but they were two out. And Valenzuela got the last man. Nobody out here. Ball one. Tommy Herr has both of the Cardinal extra base hits in the series, and oddly enough, both first inning doubles. One of the other things they watch about uh, Welch, he doesn't seem to be able to get himself comfortable on the mound, always fidgety. What was it Fred Haney once said? He would make coffee nervous. It's a, it's a tip-off on him. And he's behind 2-0. Oh. It is tough for any team to have a starter in trouble early, but the worst possible thing that could happen to the Dodger bullpen is to have to go to the pen early. The Cardinals can afford it a lot better than the Dodgers. So far, the Cardinal bullpen, they've used Horton, Daly, Campbell, Lottie, and Morrell. The Dodgers have only used Tom Needenfewer. But it's not only a matter of quantity, it's also a matter of quality. And Herzog has more of it in his pen. 2-0 to Tommy Hurd. You have McGee at first, Coleman at second, and look out here. Remember, they had that double-double steal against the Cubs. Ball three. Bobby Welch started the third game of the 83 League Championship Series, and he had to come out in the second inning because of an injury, and the Dodger bullpen was creamed by the Phil. Interesting, her really acted it out well. He was allowed to hit a 3 0 pitch, and he made sure that he let Hallinier give a sign. In there, 3 and 1. And of course, the other thing the Cardinals have relied on, they have the best home record in the National League. They're 2 to 1, 54 victories, 27 losses. You can bet if this pitch is to his liking, he's going to. There goes a Malfitano trying to move him towards left field, left center field. The eye in the sky moving him over. They expect him to really go to work on this pitch if it's one he likes. Kenny Landro moved about a good seven or eight feet over towards left center. Boy, did he have a rip there. Yes, Whoa. sir. That was the best fastball in Welsh, too. That's the first fastball he's thrown to her. It didn't look like he was aiming the ball. He squared back and fired. Here comes a tough decision now. Do you run your guys or do you hold them? Well, you got a man who doesn't hit into double plays. So you don't have to worry too much about that. And you have the two rabbits. You have Welsh thinking about all of those concerns. And running got Herzog here. It got him here. It took him to the dance. Three and two. So we'll watch Coleman and McGee. Pick, Pick off. off play and it goes into right center and there's nobody there. Landro gets it and here comes Coleman to score. McGee to third. It's 
it's not even close now. He's got plenty of daylight, a good chance to pick him off, but he throws it over the umpire's head, and it acted like a single in the center field because Landro, we pointed out, was in left center field, and the relay goes to Sachs, and Sachs, he really didn't know what to do because of the speed. He finally looked at third and saw McGee go sliding in. It's a big psychological lift in the first inning for Cox to get out of it. This is even bigger. And how and Lasorda fit to be tied. You remember all the time that was taken by the Dodgers. It was thoroughly covered in the media about a holding runners on at second base. And the first time they actually have a play, Welsh didn't keep it in the time zone. Rick Honeycutt goes down to the bullpen. Now you have a runner at third, three and two to her. The infield up and nobody out. And it's ball four. So with first and third, speed is the keynote. The stolen base by Coleman. Then no doubt the fear of the speed caused the error by Welch. How many times we've heard of you live by the sword, you die by the sword. In Los Angeles they died by the sword, but boy have they gotten life here. Well they should have life too. You always learn a lot by studying history and losing the first two games in a league championship series. Milwaukee came back to beat the Angels. San Diego came back to beat the Cubs last year. And of course, as far as a World Series, which means best four out of seven, eight times teams have lost the first two and come back. And what's interesting is five of those World Series, best four out of seven, involve the Dodgers. And he's way off, ball one. Welch is pitching like he's going to be carried out on a shield any moment. He's really trying to overthrow that curveball. Clark, a notoriously first ball fastball hitter, so he was going to start with the breaking ball, and Clark was set, and he just missed completely with it. Pitchers do a lot of things. Can't get comfortable on the mound. Go to the rosin back. Paw around. Step off the rubber. Uh, just do all kinds of things. When you got your good rhythm going, you just want the ball and you want to throw it. Well, Bob Welch is on very, very thin ice, and it's melting rapidly in the heat of St. Louis. One ball and no strikes to Jack Clark. One and one. If you're wondering, we just try to anticipate your questions with a rabbit like Willie McGee at third. McGee has not tried to steal home. Doesn't figure nobody out on the guy who can get you three with one swing, but just in case you were thinking about it, her at first. He's stolen second 26 times. If he starts for home, you'll see why he run out of the dugout and tackle him <laughs> with Clark in him. Yeah. One ball, one strike. One nothing Cardinal. This has been a very important first inning. Two and one. He did not hit the curveball is nothing. It, it really is not as good curveball. Uh, he's missing badly with it. He's aiming. So she's trying to buy a little bit of time. Settle. Uh, I'll tell you the ice is so thin it looks like if he doesn't get Clark he's gone. One of the things about Welsh, she has had excellent control in half of his starts. He walked one or none but you're looking at a man who majors in walks because of his power. He gets a lot of respect and a lot of walks. Majors in walks and fastballs. He just doesn't let them pass. He can get out of a sick bed and hit a fastball. Two and one. One to nothing, Cardinals first inning. Dodgers loaded the bases with one out and failed to score, and the Cardinals have picked up one already on what appears to be a rattled Bob Welch. Her goes on a strike to throw to Sachs. Not in time. He gets a tremendous jump and it's a straight steal. If Clark hits it. He's got to find that ball safe. So now, now the nation is looking at the team that won 100 games this year. So she gets off a good throw, but the jump that her had, he just couldn't make up for it because Welsh is he's worried about McGee, but he's more worried about Jack Clark, and now he's really in the jackpot. Second and third, nobody out. First base open. 
two and two to Clark. Infield back. Got him with a fastball. Now Andy Van Slyke coming up. Let's take another look at that fastball, Joe. He got it in a good spot. You can see he's really zeroed in on where he's going to throw it. Just blew it right by him. Strength against strength. Big meeting on the mound as to what they're going to try to do. Welch has already made 19 pitches in the first inning, plus the errant toss into right center field, plus a few other throws to first. And of course, Danny Cox was no slouch in making deliveries himself. So they both start off a little rocky, and Welch is down one nothing with one out. The infield still with first base open, and they'll walk Van Slyke and take their chances with Terry Pendleton. Just wondering what they could have been talking about. Uh, with first base open, you figure they were uh, talking maybe about McGee possibility of stealing home, and then you're saying to yourself, well, I, you doubt that. So I'm sure that they knew that they were going to put Van Slyke on, and they set up all the possibilities with Pendleton, who is liable to do anything. Yes. Remember, we saw him <laughs> with the men on first and third, nobody out, and try to bunt. So you have to just be alive. With this Cardinal Ball Club, that, that, that is, is the operative phrase, be alive, because they're liable to do anything at any time. Pendleton hits a little bit better left-handed than right-handed. However, he hit into 18 double plays this year. That's tops on the Cardinal Club. And 10 of the 18 as a left-handed batter. He is a little bit of a weaker hitter, at least in the league championship series, batting left-handed. You have to be alive for a squeeze play, definitely. I'm not talking about bunting for the base hit because Whitey's going to try to pick up as many runs as he can, obviously. And also to Pendleton's credit, we should point out, he has two grand slams this year, one of them inside the park against the Mets. So the kid from Port Juanini out in California, Terry Pendleton, has Willie McGee at third, Tommy Herr at second, and Andy Van Slyke at first. All three reached on walks. Ball one. So when you look at a pitcher who in half of his starts has walked one or none and you see him walk three in the first inning you really have to think it's league championship series pressure. The air is different to breathe between those lines than it is the rest of the ballpark. One ball and no strikes. like he was just only going to knock it down but he's able to get the out a big out because if it gets through there and this is a very quick surface and Sachs makes a fine play big out you have to remember too that throw by Bob Welsh into center field allowed one run you don't really know how things would have gone had he not thrown the ball away we do know that the Cardinals have two in the first inning they have again runners at second and third. They have the left hand hitting Daryl Porter coming up and the switch hitting Ozzie Smith on deck. Porter is hitting 167. He has two hits so far in the series. Those were his numbers for the year. And with two out they're going after him. Two nothing St. Louis in the first inning. Breaking ball strike. They really expect him to pull the ball. Landro is way over in right center field as we look at Ozzy Smith. A lot of room in, and you see the defense there. Look where Landro is and how much room he's got center field over. There we finally see Guerrero. Sachs can play beyond the rim, beyond the infield white line, and he is so far out there that he has to lean to his right to try to look in to see what Sosh is calling. He wants to find out about an off speed pitch which he then figures that Porter would certainly pull. He's going to pull everything this guy it seems like. Oh and one. Breaking ball and the count one ball one strike. Daryl Porter he even a big sigh they all do it in this kind of a game and this kind of pressure. Oh, no. 
Cardinals two runs one hit Dodgers no runs one hit one very big error. Ran away ball two two and one. The pressure is here and here comes Madlock in to talk to Welsh and I think Red had a great line Shane Deans and that Huck Finn philosophy as we look at the Dodger. They were telling Sochi to go out go out and they're going to buy some time. Somebody asked Red before the game how about psychologically how do you feel and Red says psychologically he said we're not trying to go to Princeton pal we're just trying to win a game. And that's what they're doing. Trying to win a game. And now they're going to put him on. So they will take their chances and that's tough. That means Bob Welsh will have walked four batters in the first inning. Admittedly two of them intentionally but four in the first inning. His most walks in any one game this year had been three. And you can understand Lasorda running his fingers through his thinning hair. It's getting hotter by the minute here. And Ozzie Smith, who just slaps at that ball, can put it in play and on his artificial surface. He becomes a tough, tough hitter. Ozzie Smith is four for eight in the series. Those are his numbers for the regular year. And with two down, a very tough hitter at the plate. Contact hitter strikes out about once every 22 times. So you don't look for to get him out that way. Porter, Van Slyke, and her on the bases. And Bob Welsh on the griddle. They're trying to pull in Landro, pull him in and towards left field. They're having a terrible time moving him. Strike. Welsh battling to stay in the game. Honeycutt has been throwing back of him. And Honeycutt is just about ready. And look at that. That's a lot of pitches, and he's not out of the first inning. Plus, nine throws to the bases. And one to the outfield. Oh, and one. There's Honeycutt standing at the ready. Welch on and off the rubber. See, that's that's a message to the parent Oscar the pitching coach when you're not sure of yourself you, you change signs you go to Rosenberg rub up the ball paw at the mound. On oh, one fly ball in the right center but Marshall is there and that's it the Cardinals get two runs on one hit four walks a stolen base on a big error and Lasorda hands over his eyes two nothing Cardinals one noisy inning in the books. The Cardinals two runs one hit the Dodgers no runs one hit the Dodgers sent six men to the plate and came up empty the Cardinals sent up eight men to the plate and scored twice. Now it's up to Danny Cox and Porter to throw strikes and keep it in the ballpark because uh, all the Cardinals feel if the ballpark if the ball stays in the ballpark one of the outfielders will catch it. You know one of the interesting things about the Dodgers this year the fact that they were out homered at home and out homered the opposition on the road and a classic case in point is the kid who will lead things off in the second inning Greg Brock. It'll be Brock Sachs and Wells. We can give you the numbers it'll tell you more than a million words. Strike. Now look at that consistency. And then the inconsistency of the home run on the road. Of course, one thing about this ballpark, this is an airport. Mm. It is 330 down the lines, 383 to the alleys, and 414 to center. Ground ball to the right side to Tommy Herr. And you might point out too in this ballpark there's a lot of foul territory room even with the extra boxes along first and third you still have plenty of room behind the plate and that means ball stay in play times at bat Number over three. the course of the year means Second a lot baseman. but in the series as you can Seven. see a lot of room to make plays here. The walls and they are something that will come into play the walls are ten and a half feet high and you'll notice not in center field but in left and right. The walls have a yellow trim to them. If the ball hits the yellow trim, it is in play. That's ball one. 
Bush Stadium opened up in May of 1966. The Cardinals won the first game here. In 12 innings, they beat Atlanta 4 to 3. So they got it off to the right start. Ball two. In the previous two games, it has been Steve Sachs who has collected the first Dodger hit, but today Kenny Landro doubled in the first inning. Ball three. Pendleton at third base, kind of even with the bag. You don't expect uh, Sachs to be punting the ball in this ballpark. It's a very difficult ballpark to punt in. It's hard in front of home plate, the artificial surface. You, you really have to be a Houdini or a reincarnated Rizzuto. <laughs> Danny Cox never heard of Rizzuto, but he goes 3-0 and and he's low to Steve Sachs. That's what you have to stay away from. Two plays you can't defense, uh, strikeouts and walks. And that is the third walk given up by Danny Cox, meaning we've had seven walks in Betty one inning plus. Over 35. Now we have six. You had Anderson, Guerrero, and now Sachs. And you had four walks in the first inning. So this spills over in the six in the first inning a record and it's been a walking day strike. Bob Welsh has sacrificed seven times for a ball club that led the league in sacrifices. He's a fair hitter he had nine hits and four RBIs. Valenzuela and Hershiser had a couple of hits when they played. They were two for five. No swing, no bunt. One and one to count. John McSherry, the plate umpire, Terry Tata at first, Paul Rungi at second, Jerry Crawford at third. On the lines, Bruce Fremming in right, and Dick Stello down the left field line. Bad throw. Good play by Clark. That's what you don't want him to do right now. Worry about the hitter. Remember, Anderhart tried and threw it in the right field. And there he goes. Hit and run, miss. Port is throw. He's out of there. Porter really sidearmed that ball. He really made a sensational throw when you look at it. Sachs did not have that good a jump. You saw both being on the dirt. He's looking back to see what happened to the ball. So that cut down his speed. And Porter really made a sensational throw. Watch how he throws his ball. He's down on one knee, and he really three-quarters sidearms it, and it goes to the second base side, and it's a perfect throw. It's an amateurish thought, and professionals, I'm sure, have to fight it. The thought that the Dodgers might have of, uh-oh, it's going to be that kind of a day. They have to think that. They have to but think that. You have that. to fight it if you're a pro, don't you? Oh, you have to fight it, but, but you're definitely thinking. You really have to battle it because everything has gone wrong. I mean, they plug in for the toaster, and the television set's going on. Two and two. Down he goes, and the Dodgers tiptoe through the second inning. And at the end of an inning and a half, the revitalized Cardinals, too. And the Dodgers He's got both feet on the dirt part. Not a very good jump. Now watch him look back to see where the ball is. Right there. See him looking. Now he's going to lose some of the speed. You've heard us talk all summer about run and hit and hit and run. Whenever you see a runner do that, Looking it's a hit and run nine. because he's looking for the ball. On, and the hitter has to swing and protect him. On a run and hit, he has the option. Obviously, uh, if it's a good pitch, go ahead and hit it, but take it. And the runner has got his head looking towards second base like it's a straight steal. Well, Danny Cox still has his head on his shoulders. For a moment there in the first inning, it looked like he might be decapitated. And he's leading 2 nothing as well as he fouls the first pitch back and out of play. 0-1. You know, the Dodgers certainly could not come in here overly confident if they just studied their own history of the last couple of years. In the best four out of seven, they've been involved in two turnabouts. Just recently, in the 78 World Series, the Dodgers won the first two games at Dodger Stadium, lost three at Yankee Stadium. Remember the magic of Greg Nettles and the rundown where the throw hit Reggie Jackson in the hip? And then Catfish Hunter put him away. And in 1981, the Yankees won the first two games. And the Dodgers turned around to win the next four. So the Dodgers leading two games to none, but knowing this is a four out of seven, they certainly can't come to St. Louis taking anything for granted. And they have too many memories. I don't think they have. Not with that little sword is sitting down there. 
And Tommy involved in two of them as manager. Right. So Danny Cox, who had a dozen hits during the year, he's not a bad hitter, but down he goes. You can ask his brother in law what kind of hitter he is. <laughs> I don't know whether it was for extra bases or out of the park. <laughs> Lights out anyway. Vince Coleman, who opened up the game for the Cardinals, and it was such a big moment. And whether Whitey Herzog and Red Shane wants to throw the word psychological out the window, they can if they wish. But in the first inning, when the Cardinals got off the hook, and then Coleman got a base hit, a word by any other name was left for the birds. It's funny watching him try to get the donut off. He tried to use it like the big guys and couldn't get it off the bat. Right. Coleman single stole second and then you remember Wells tried to pick him off and the best thing that could have happened to Bob Wells is if he had hit Paul Runge the umpire but he didn't and Coleman scored from second fouled away he almost hit Runge Runge yes, acted very well to get his head out of the way it was an umpire knockdown pitch is what it was way to go Paul. Oh and two to Vince Coleman. One and two. You know, I was looking down at Bill Madlock playing third for the Dodgers, and the thought suddenly occurred to me. You know what a great record the Cardinals have at home. They're the best, 54 and 27. You know one reason why they're best? Because they let Pittsburgh play here. Two and two. You know what the Cardinals did to Pittsburgh here? How about nine for nine? And Madlock was involved in a lot of them. <laughs> so every now and then, you see him look down at his uniform shirt to remind himself he's not with the Bucks. Or did they walk the plank here? Two and two to Vince Coleman. Ground win. That's hit into right field. who certainly felt the pressure in the first inning will have it immediately applied in the second inning. And I invite all you people watching television to join me in playing the game. When should you pitch out? Forget strategy. The Cardinals run at any time, any pitch. As we look at Powell running down to the bullpen. But you know he's going. Pick a pitch. When would you like to pitch out? Willie McGee standing at first. The league's leading hitter, remember, and walked in the first inning. And that sums it up. First time the Dodgers had walked him all year. That usually tells you the pitch out is not on, but uh, he's going to have to keep him close, and so sure you know he's thinking about it. There ain't no bluff. Good bluff. I don't know if that was a bluff or whether he started to go and change his mind. It was uh, really a good bluff. He gave it a good start. I tell you, and that's the way you acted out. The, he had a Welch rushing his pitch, and so she just jumped right out of there. Now, he's got to come to a complete stop. That's what Whitey talked about. Here's Coleman really bearing down. Got a good lead. One ball and no strikes. Welsh's feet, quick movement. He has quick feet when he throws to first base. He has thrown to first base ten times, and he has thrown to second, albeit only once. It was quite a throw. It wound up in right center. Strike. One and one. What do you think? You can't pitch out because he's wild. Right. That's the only bad thing. Yep, he walked four in the first inning. You really got to be sure. He's got a big lead. Coleman takes a lead, and for all the world, he does look like a cat who's trying to bury something in a sandbox. Boy, does he get ready at the end of the runway to take off. One and one. You talk about pawing at the dirt. Look he, at him. He should be calling time to do that. He's wow. gonna, while he's doing all that landscaping, I mean, he's not going to get a good housekeeping award for that. He's going to get picked off. One and one. 
Got that right foot well on the rug, and he was too far on the rug. Again, we pointed it out. That's a, such a big advantage if you have a left-handed first baseman. The Dodgers don't have one, and that's a big difference. When you're diving back, you're as far as you can get. Lou Brock, it was 11 strides in the slide. Uh, Kenny Boyer was an arm's length and a body, uh, body's length and an arm away. Here he goes. Here he goes. Pitch out. Now they got him hung up. In the dirt in the right field. They'll stop him at third. And he sees it now. He's in no man's land. There was a rhythm change there. Socia could have kept running right towards him, but he elects to get rid of the ball. Now he's got him stopped here. If he just keeps running towards him, and it's just a bad throw, and I'll tell you, it's Ghostbuster time. And now the infield up with one out. Coleman at third. He has stolen home twice this year. McGee and her back to back. Two to nothing Cardinals with a golden opportunity for more. Ball three and Welch is all over the place now. He undermined himself. And now with another base hit and the throwing error by Sosha, he's up to his hips. He's made 46 pitches already. And they're playing like they keep waiting for the other shoe to drop and it's dropping and they're not there. Three and one to McGee. Big chopper. It is three to nothing Cardinals and this might not be a bad idea to remind you John Tudor is pitching tomorrow against Jerry Royce and Royce has never won in a league championship game Royce is 0 and 6 so there's a lot of pressure not just over the fact the Cardinals have taken a lead the Dodgers can't look forward to tomorrow too much. And with Willie McGee on, you're going to have to be careful because they want to keep that merry-go-round going. McGee walked and wound up at third on Welsh's error in the first inning. Honeycutt is up in the Dodger bullpen. Three runs, three hits for the Cardinals. Just one hit, a double by Landro for the Dodgers. told you that in the first two games McGee and Colvin hit a combined 167 it should be pointed out they are three for three today with a walk and three runs scored they had him leaning that time man. and he's got that right foot on the rug Dodgers pitch out usually it's like Pavlov's dog that salivates at the sound of a bell. When a pitcher on AstroTurf sees the runner with run foot on the rug, he either throws over there or they pitch out. And that time they pitched out, and the bench is getting a lesson. Amalfitano is the man who calls the pitch out. He, you're going to be wrong, but you, when you're right, it really picks up the ball club if they execute. One ball, no strikes. McGee goes. Anderson making the tag 2-6. So, so Mike Socia gets one. Socia is throwing much better. Now McGee's got a good jump. Socia's throw is right there. And one of the things he's doing, his release is so good. And he's catching that ball closer to him, then. And uh, if you catch it way out there, you have to bring it back. But he's catching it close to his body and really getting rid of it in, in, in just in great shape. So that really is the first time the Dodgers have executed a play. It is three to nothing Cardinals and here is Tommy Herr who walked in the first inning stole second and was left at third. Well the Cardinals have really seized the moment and they're trying to run away with it. 
fastball fouled away. Let's take a look at that release you were talking about, Joe. He really gets rid of it. Now look where he is, nice and low. Got that ball. He's already moving, and he gets something on it. I mean, you've seen it in slow motion, but look at that throw in plenty of time. And McGee had himself a good jump. I mean, Sosha just literally threw him out. Give that credit to Mike. Fastball. Two and two. In the regular season, Sosha had thrown out just one Cardinal base runner. Uh, they put a lot of heat on him, but there's too much talk about catchers and a percentage of throwing people out. The key is the pitcher. Two and two. Tried a breaking ball, and there wasn't very much on it. He does not have that good curveball yet. No. Sosia has been working trying to reach for it and fish for it, and that's what you have to do. Three and two to Tommy Hur. Fastball hit foul out of play. For Tommy Lasorda, I guess the day began on a foul note when he found out Mariano Duncan couldn't play, and it has been downhill ever since. back. You want to talk about getting a workout? We're only in the second inning. Bob Welch has made 55 pitches to the plate. He's made one throw to second base that went into right center and he has thrown to first 15 times. Tommy says he doesn't put much faith in counting pitches but he'll have to do it in this case because that's just too many pitches. Three and two. Fastball. the fastball that he hits. Now keep in mind we were talking about Welch not having the curveball and the last three pitches to her were fastballs and you just can't keep throwing a fastball to a good hitter and get away with it. So it is four to nothing St. Louis and you talk about a ball club coming alive. The Cardinals have come home and they are alive and well as a little red balloon sails across home plate. There she goes. And with it are the Cardinal spirits going up and up and up. Jack Clark and Andy Van Slyke. Someone had thrown something out of the bleachers in right center field and the ground crew out there picking it up and that's the delay. Cardinal red streamers of sorts. So four runs, four hits for the birds. No runs, one hit for the Dodgers. And here is Jack Clark who struck out in the first inning. And there's the attempted curveball. That's about the best you can call it. One ball, no strikes. And another one, but he got it over. One and one. He's got to keep trying to find it because if you're just trying to call a game one pitch as Sosha's doing, it's like catching with handcuffs on. Fastball, and he was a little late. So after two curveballs, Jack didn't quite get around. Remember, he struck out on a fastball in the first inning. So Bob Welch, who was 2 and 0 and had an earned run average of 1 in two starts against the Cardinals during the regular season is being roughed up here. That's playable and it'll be the left fielder Guerrero. So the Cardinals add 2, they lead 4 to nothing and we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. The Cardinals have flown away to a 4 to nothing lead as we go to the 3rd. 
Dave Anderson, Ken Landro, and Bill Madlock. 4 1. Anderson walked on four pitches in the first inning. That's when Cox got himself into trouble. Landro doubled, but he got Madlock, walked Guerrero, and then got Marshall and Socia, and got out of the inning alive. And then the Cardinals came back with two, added two more, and they're leading comfortably four to nothing. Breaking ball, and he missed. Two and one. Anderson hit 261 against the Cardinals. That's not earth shaking, but it was his highest batting average against any National League team. Three and one. It's interesting he would even fool with the curveball just on what you just said, man. I mean, I know he's hitting 261, but that's not going to get you to the Hall of Fame unless you buy a ticket, so stay away from the walk. There's the fastball. Danny Cox leading 4 0 in the third. And a breaking ball got him. He's got them all, and he's having uh, better luck with his fastball, but that was a good curveball he got over. That's one of those clutch pitches that you save it for, but here it is. Nobody on leading off an inning. Boom, curveball, and all Anderson could do was genuflect. So one away, and here's Kenny Landro. Who doubled a right in the first inning? Ball one. So Landro with three doubles, hitting 667 in the series. One and one to count. Two balls and one strike. Landro hit less than 200 against the Cardinals this year. They really did a number on him. But he did have two home runs and a half a dozen RBIs. Cardinals four, Dodgers nothing, top of the third. Change, and not much on that one. Three and one. Remember, Cox has walked three. And that's hit towards left center. Coleman on the run. It's a thing they can do in this ballpark. You just pluck those gaps. Coleman, really an easy play, and that's where the one hand catch really comes into play. It's on the glove side, just reaches out and makes the play. Third baseman, Bill Madlock. So Vince Coleman taking care of the drive by Landro. Here is Madlock, and in a sense, he was a key hitter in the first inning. Remember, Anderson had walked, Landro had doubled, and Madlock came up. If he gets a base hit, you don't know what's going to happen. Instead, he hit the first ball to Clark, and the runners held, and before you know it, Cox was out of the inning. Fly ball to McGee, and Cox is going to be out of this inning. At the end of two and a half innings, the Cardinals four and the Dodgers say this in front of God and everybody. But why do Herzog and Red Shane need so full of beans? Why? Because they know as much about the meaning of psychology as anybody with any degree. And don't let them kid me or you or anybody else. Well, they, they know as much, but they're not going to use the word, but they're going to do it. Why are you coming out to argue? Red saying, hey, we just want to win the game. They're going to make it simple. It's the Willie Mays theory, man. When they hit it, catch it. And when they throw it, hit it. And meanwhile, they're going to tell the rest of us, uh, we don't know anything about psychology. Right. We're not trying to go to Princeton. <laughs> now that's going to get Yale mad. <laughs> well, give them equal time. Leading off, right fielder Andy Van Slyke. Andy Van Slyke will start it off. The Dodgers had done something that most teams in the league had been unable to do. They had really shackled this high powered Cardinal offense going into today's game the Dodgers had held the Cardinals to three runs or less in 10 of the 14 games that includes the two league championships. but boy what a difference a day makes 2 and 0 
been in this wonderful age of statistics. It's given us game-winning RBIs. Welsh has made 62 pitches, 15 throws to first, one throw to second for 76 throws, two long-distance calls, and what have you. 76 is not the spirit you want here today. No. <laughs> two and oh. In there, doing one. He's throwing the ball a lot, man. Yeah, everywhere. <laughs> Van Slyke walked intentionally in the first inning. Three and one. One way or another, Welsh is on borrowed time. He is not the kind of a pitcher who can pitch a 150 pitch game so that he could not hang around even if the Dodgers came alive offensively on a day like today. Three and one. Fly ball to straightaway center. Kenny Landro is here. That's a cemetery of hopes out there, 414 feet away. When fellow pitches a game like this down the bullpen, they call it a yo yo day. You just Very up and down good. all day, yeah. up all day. and down. <laughs> well, here's Terry Pendleton, who has had his ups and downs for sure. Terry, however, came up. And grounded hard. Sachs made a great play and he picked up an RBI, lost a hit. Slices it to left, but Guerrero is there. Two down. And Daryl Porter coming up. Now, you're the coach. Catch Welch has been Darryl struggling. Porter. Guys, Van Vance like it, the 3 1 pitch. He hit the first pitch. Would you let him take a strike? Oh, and how? I'm always amazed at how coaches and the manager will allow a hitter to go up and do what would appear to be so obvious not to do. You're assuming. And you always blame the hitter. Well, you should. You have to assume that he's going to take a pitch right here. That's the way you play. That's the way you learn. You can die by assumption in the big leagues. Huh. There take it, it is. There's a veteran, right? Terrific assumption. And it was not a good pitch. It was out of the strike zone. Yeah, but look, he's hitting. It's, yeah, <laughs> oh. If you made him take it, probably file a grievance, but I mean, it's bad hitting. Oh, and one to count to Daryl Porter. Assume my foot. One ball, one strike. Two out in the third. Cardinals four, Dodgers nothing. Ozzie Smith on deck. Two and one. If he takes the first pitch, he's three and oh. <laughs> Yeah, but you're assuming. That's right. That's because you were a big leaguer. <laughs> big leaguers assume. Yeah. Two and one. Breaking ball, and that's it. Foul. Two and two. Welsh is due to bat sixth. And you can almost count the time. Lasorda does not want to get into his bullpen. But, of course, he doesn't want to see the ball game just totally go down the tubes. Two and two to Daryl Porter. Three and two. Ron Paranoski standing there, and Monty Basco wearing glasses, and Lasorda back in the dark corner. He's probably spit out that good luck straw by now. Slow curve. It is that non-existent curveball that we've been talking about. And Porter is into second base with a double. Not only was it not breaking and biting hard, it was up. And there's nothing that a hitter loves more than a nice high curveball. And Porter really Jordan jumped on it. Smith. See Brock jumping, but to no avail. Right down the line. They were really shifted over to play him to pull, and it's exactly what he did, but no chance at all. They're going to walk Ozzy intentionally, which comes as no great surprise. That means five walks given up by Bob Welch, but three of them intentionally granted. Looking at Darrell Porter with that double, reminds you three years ago for the Cardinals, he was a big man in the LCS. He went five for nine with three doubles. 
And you don't have to be a genius to realize what the double meant. They walk Ozzy, and now you got uh, Cox hitting. Not a bad hitter for a pitcher, but the main thing is he'll be out of the way. Uh, and the uh, fourth inning when the Jackrabbits will lead it off again. In case you have not remembered the 82 LCS, that's when the Cardinals knocked off Atlanta three straight as Bobby Castillo and Rick Honeycutt get up in the Dodger bullpen. Honeycutt was up in the first inning. Swing for a strike. They're really playing Cox to the opposite field. They're almost playing like he were a left-hand batter. Landro's in right center, not too deep in right field. Uh, Porter's going to have trouble scoring if Cox should get a base hit. He had a dozen hits and a half a dozen RBIs during the year. 0 oh and 2 to Danny. Bob Welch struggling to get out of the inning struggling to just stay around a little while longer really. Oh and two. Good save by Sosia one and two. Danny Cox the hitter along with his buddy Kurt Kepshire. Which of the two do you think was born in Northampton England. Kurt Kepshire. Nope. Danny Cox. What's in the name? Four nothing St. Louis. Porter at second, Smith at first. Fastball, two and two. It must seem like an eternity out there for Bob Wells. He's made 80 pitches so far and he's in the third inning. And he's also had so many base runners. I mean he doesn't know if he's pitching with two infields. And there are guys out there all the time. Two balls two strikes two out. Deuces on the scoreboard for the Cardinals in the first and second innings, and they lead 4 0. Fans are booing, but not even close to a brush back. He just liked to throw a strike. That just got away from him. He is just staggering. He is, is just staggering his right. In fact, he's what they call a near beer pitcher, three and two. And the runner's going. Porter at second, Smith at first, and he's walked Danny Cox. Well, I don't think Lasorda can take any more. I would doubt it. And here he comes. Enough is enough. Six walks, five hits, four runs. He has surrendered a home run, a double. He has thrown a ball into right center field. The best thing to do is to be careful going home. And Rick Honeycutt will be coming in to pick up the pieces. Cardinals four. Numbers don't explain to you that he underwent off-season surgery to remove the tip of the clavicle in his left shoulder. And although he's been employed mostly as a starter, he's been pretty ineffective. He split four, then he lost three in a row and never really got back in the 500 level. He lost five of his last seven. He did win his last decision, and that was his only complete game in 25 starts against Atlanta the middle of September. So he is a pitcher who is struggling to come back from surgery and is now brought in with the Cardinals leading four to nothing. Left fielder. The base is loaded. Two out and Whitey Herzog enjoying his first moments in the ballpark since the league championship series began. And you have to give him some credit Vin, for starting that fire because uh, on the first move by Welsh to first base he came out and he started screaming and yelping. Coleman turning around to hit right handed and it's interesting. He hit 100 left handed against the Dodgers and 300 right handed against the Dodgers. But they are forced to pitch to him this way with two out. Ball one. Porter at third. 
Smith at second, Cox at first. You might be getting sick and tired of base on balls already. And it's a good reason this has been one of the sloppier league championship games as far as walks are concerned. One ball, no strike. Ground ball to Sachs, he'll take it to the bag. So Honeycutt takes care of Coleman. The Cardinals leave three, but at the end of three, it is Cardinals four, Dodgers nothing. Guerrero, Marshall, and on the mound. Danny Cox trying to throw a knockout of his own, leading four to nothing. When you talk to him, he talks like a good old boy. The Dodgers will have Pedro Guerrero, Mike Marshall, and Mike Sosha. We were talking before about walks. The most walks in an LCS game by two teams, 12. And we've had nine so far today in three innings. Ironically, back in 1974, the Dodgers and the Pirates, the Dodgers drew 11 walks, and four of those walks were given up by Jerry Royce, who will be the Dodgers pitcher tomorrow, and who has never won a league championship game. There's Jerry now, and he'll draw John Tudor. There's a drive to left. Coleman moving. Can't get it. And that will give Guerrero the extra base as McGee backs up. And Pete into second base standing with a double. It was a sinking line drive and it caught Coleman in between. It looked like he was going to play it on the hop, but he had broken in. Right here is in between. Now he's going to go for it, and he's not even close to it. And with the artificial surface, it's going to get by him. You know, one thing has happened to Guerrero. He got into a terrible habit following the injury. And while trying to break Steve Garvey's record, now that that's history and he still has the bad wrist, he has adjusted. He's not hitting for any power. But since he is coming back, he's been hitting over 340. He's just unable to hit the seats like he did all year. And here's Mike Marshall. Fouled away. Mike, of course, was a key out in the first inning. They had walked Guerrero to load the bases with one out. He didn't figure to hit into a double play, and he didn't. He broke his bat and popped one over to Ozzie Smith. And the Dodgers are sending a message to the Cardinals to the extent that, hey, we think he's going to try to get ahead of us with fastballs. We're going to jump on it first pitch. Guerrero did, and Marshall just did. Breaking ball, and a good one. Marshall is one for ten in the league championship series. And he's a kind of an intense kid who you could say is pressing and it would be more than just a reasonable guess. Fastball. That's a break. And a deep drive to right center. McGee can't get it. It's going to bounce in the seat. How could he give him an 0 and 2 fastball? Oh. So Guerrero scores. Marshall will stop at second and it is 4 to 1. And that was some pitch by Danny Cox. I think he was trying to get the ball inside. You see McGee trying to track it down, but that ball almost out of here. It bounces high enough to go into the seats. Luckily, because it had been at least a three base hit, he tried to move it back. That was a mistake, but he made the mistake the wrong way. That's the kind of a scouting report on Marshall Owen, too, a kid who presses breaking, breaking ball, ball hammer bad, in the dirt bad bounce sure. that ball you got to throw that 55 footer boy that was a Christmas present here's Mike Sosha now ball one the Dodgers trying to come back into the game with back to back doubles by Guerrero and Marshall to make it four to one St. Louis one ball and no strikes Off speed and he's behind 2 and 0. One thing, and we mentioned it earlier, there is a big advantage that Whitey Herzog has, and he'll use it. He'll go to a bullpen that has piled up 44 saves, and he won't hesitate. That's his pitching coach, Mike Rourke, in front of him. Throwback just got back with the hand. It's a good thing he didn't go back with his foot. He takes about a 14 shoe. They'd have gotten him. They would have gotten him. And it was an ad lib play. Ozzie Smith had the daylight between Marshall and the pitcher, and the ball is there in plenty of time, but he tags him right about at the elbow. A sensational call by Rungi. Fastball hit to right. Marshall will tag. Van Slyke for the catch, and the Moose is trying to go to third. He is in there. 
Tell you, he made it close, Van Slyke did, and he only did it by aggressive play. As the ball was in the air, he really got himself in a position, and I tell you, he knew he had a chance. And look at Marshall bearing down, and the big guy's running as hard as he can, and that throw is a real good throw. Doesn't get him, but a good throw. Look at him, Alfatano. He's down on all fours. Now watch him get in position. Look at him. Three steps as he catches the ball, and he puts everything he's got on it. If nothing else, that tells the Dodgers, you run on me, I'm going to shoot you down. Good play. Yeah, but it didn't take quite that high a hop. It would have been a lot closer. Good play, right. So with a runner at third, the Dodgers now trying to cut the lead in half. Off speed, good pitch to an aggressive hitter. Danny Cox has made 51 pitches, so he's not exactly been breezing. But that was a very heady pitch. That was as good a pitch, a smart pitch, as it was a bad pitch to Marshall. Fastball fouled away on two. Stan Musial just caught that ball. Do you believe that? Look at him. That's Musial. He'll get a tremendous hand. Way to go, Stan. And he throws it to the fans. <laughs> Stan the man made the play. Of all guys to get a baseball. Yeah. I'm telling you, that guy, the only disappointment I ever had is when he slid into a base, oil didn't come up. <laughs> I'll tell you the only disappointment I ever had here. What? I was here. One night they booed him. Oh, I can't believe uh, as, that. As the Lord is my judge. And the next day, a group of fans took an ad out in the paper and publicly apologized. I would have been one of them. Oh, and two, the count to Brock. You have to ask somebody like Bob Bragg to tell you the year, but I was here. Marshall at third, one out in the fourth inning. Bragg will tell you the time. Cardinals four, Dodgers one. Got him, big strikeout. And he wasn't going to throw him any fastballs. No, sir. Danny Cox has the basic pitches fastball at tails or sinks a hard curve but the scouting report is excellent change and there it is and he's way out in front Second of it. Baseman. He mixes all of them and he can use any of them for an out but he's so big that he looks like he should be able to blow you away with the fastball and then when he changes speeds he gets you. I was just thinking after that bad pitch to Marshall he sure got smart in a hurry didn't he. <laughs> Well, he missed with that pitch. He didn't want him to hit that pitch, but, but he with missed all... with the wrong pitch. Well, if you're going to miss, you got to miss inside and get it way in there. But when you miss and you get it out over the plate, that's what happens. But hey, that happens. Here's Sachs with two out. Fastball, strike one. Carlos Diaz is down in the Dodger bullpen. If Sachs gets aboard, they would probably hit for Honeycutt, I would assume. Two out, one in, four to one, St. Louis, top of the fourth. Time. Sachs walked in the second inning. He has hit Danny Cox very well. He is five for 12 going head to head against him. Breaking ball missed. One and one. Interesting how Porter is setting up back there. He gives a sign and almost comes out of that uh, catching position, sets himself like he's going to throw somebody out, and then moves. 4-1 Cardinals, top of the fourth. One ball, one strike. Breaking ball lined at her. And it is still a Cardinal day. One run, one hit, one left. At the end of three and a half, St. Louis four. Championship Series, the Blue Jays and the Royals. That's tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Everybody, including a fellow named George Brett. It was really exciting to watch that last oh. night. What a ball game, and what great pictures we had of the, the, the whole Brett saga last night. When you talk about great players rising to the occasion, was a classic example of it. Rick Honeycutt getting ready, and he'll be pitching to Willie McGee, Tommy Herr, and then Jack Clark. So they'll turn the switch hitters around. McGee has walked in single against starter Bob Welch. Now he'll hit right handed against Honeycutt. I know the reluctance that Tommy Lasorda has of getting into his bullpen in the middle of the game or relatively early. Honeycutt is due to lead off in the fifth inning. Tommy might perhaps 
be convinced by the way Honeycutt pitches this inning as to whether he allows him to stay in the game or hit for him. Ball one. Show you what kind of a productive day it has been here in the aviary that is Bush Stadium. The home of the birds. Bow back. Every Cardinal has had a plate appearance with a runner in scoring position. How about that? 19 plate appearances for St. Louis and 11 with runners in scoring position. It's been standing room only in the first three innings for Cardinal base runners. They have left the bases loaded twice. And that's promptly whacked into center base hit. So Willie McGee, a line single. Nick Lava over to talk to him and Tommy Herr, the batter. Herr walked in the first inning and stole a base and then came up and homered in the second. His home run was good for only one because McGee, if you remember, was thrown out just prior to Herr's home run. Got a left hand pitcher now. A lot of runners like that even better, and you got a hit and run combination. They do play the game with these two fellas. McGee one foot on the rug and Honeycutt's going over there. We'd like to remind our viewers we'll be selecting the NBC light beer from Miller player of the game at the conclusion of the ball game. Long way to go. We're in the bottom of the four. Cardinals four Dodgers one. McGee poised and at the ready. And the bunt up along third foul. All in one. The key, for instance, to Fernando Valenzuela's success holding the Cardinal runners on is his extraordinary balance when he gets his weight on his left leg, lifts his right, and he doesn't waver. He is very, very difficult to read. McGee will be trying to read Honeycutt's balance once he raises that right leg. One thing I remember Maury Wills always thought it was easier to steal on a left hander because he's exposed to your view. You, you can read him. him. You see him. That's right. A lot of them like that. And they, they pick a spot. The foot. Knee. Oh and one. You got the same view with that shot as the runner. And he's coming. Pick up a move. You, you, this is what McGee's looking at. Now just concentrate on the pitcher and see what moves first for you. And then first move you can break. Well, he's trying to see the best move that Honeycutt has. And sooner or later he's going to get it. He may have just gotten it. Yeah. Man. That was a pretty good one. Cardinal saw a little bit of Honeycutt during the year. He was in 12 innings against them. McGee's got him read pretty well. As soon as he starts, uh, McGee's back there. Cardinals four runs, six hits, including a home run and a double. A couple of stolen bases in the first inning. 0 and 1. We mentioned it the first night and again the second game that Dodger pitchers will have a tendency to hold the ball at the belt a little bit longer because McGee has a tendency to take a lead and then if you don't do anything instead of remaining on the balls of his feet he has a tendency to settle. So part of any scouting report on the Cardinals is to hold the ball and hope that McGee will settle. I hadn't helped that much. McGee has stolen 56 bases during the year. There are a couple ways that you try to stop runners. One of them is to do what Honeycutt is doing, and the other, of course, is what Finn is talking about, is just hold that ball. And the third way is to change your uh, rhythm as far as your pitch towards the, towards the plate. 
you hold that ball, you're just going to freeze him. He hasn't come close to diving back to the bag. Now he's got that foot on the rug. Chop foul. Back of Hal Lanier down the line. And the bodyguard, Ken Howell. That to me would be the worst part of playing the game, being the bullpen catcher with you back to home plate. It's scary down there. There's Mark Cressy. Not anymore. They put a guy there. When I was playing, they didn't do that. They either Did that tell you anything? Yeah, they either <laughs> released you or made your bullpen catch you. <laughs> oh, and two, the count to Tommy Hurd. McGee at first. Nobody out in the fourth. Cardinals four, Dodgers one. This is really some game when you're keeping track of throws to first. It's two strikes, no balls, but with these Cardinals, you just can't say, hey, he's going to waste the pitch, he's going to do this. They run at any time. You just better be ready. And he doesn't look like he's going to run. He looks like he's just kind of standing over there. He's not poised like a Ricky Henderson. He's just kind of almost straight up. And he's not going. One and two. Of course, he plays the game like that. Willie yeah. McGee doesn't look like he's intense, but when you, you you talk to him, you know he's bearing down all the time. But now he's looking around, trying to get a sign. They, McGee's got the green light. I mean, he can run at any time. That's a whole new thing. I, they got one, two, three, four different lights the Dodgers have. I'll tell you about him when I get a chance. One and two, the count to Tommy Hurd. McGee not going and they pitch out. Well, now be careful. Now you're trapped. You pitched out, it didn't happen, you're trapped. So with everything else, the Dodgers have guessed wrong and the count two and two. Good pitch out. He had plenty of room to throw, but nothing happened. I'll tell you one thing, they've got so ship. Not back to the wall. They got him catching sideways. Well, he's got a deep trouble now. Two and two. And Honeycutt's got to help him because it, it, you talk about that Pavlov's dog. That's what usually happens. Pitch out, don't go. Oops, here we go this time, Pally. Well, let's watch that right foot now. If it gets on the rug, see if he means business. Still on the dirt. There you go. Now he's on the rug. Now he's really on the rug. Look out now. And hands on his knees. Line down the left field line, hooking in the corner. Foul. Foul ball. Honeycutt put a good move on McGee. He really froze him as he with his leg. As he came set, he kind of gave it a little move that way, and here he came. You know, that could have been part of why her hit the ball so hard, too. He was so worried about the runner. Could be because I tell you he put a he put a good move. You watch the move now. As he comes to right. Oh, that was a bit too swift for me. <laughs> Picked me off. Two balls, two strikes. Tommy Herr has three of the Cardinals four extra base hits. He has two doubles and a home run. And Willie McGee. And now he's well out on that rug again. Four to one Cardinals in the fourth. Not going. Hit the other way foul. Inside out. Talking about those green lights and red lights, the Dodgers and, and uh, I asked Lasso, he's got a red light to stop runners, a green light to runners can go at any time. He gives a sign, it's a yellow light for guys that are hurt, you can go, but be careful. And then he's got a purple light for Sosha that if he runs, he'll kill him. Can I give you an inside Dodger note? Yes. He has several who are colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> Two and two, the count. <laughs> well, you saw them all year. That's you know. Right. <laughs> no names mentioned to protect the guilty. <laughs> so Tommy Hur with the count two and two, and Willie McGee at first. He's gone. Got him. And missed him. So they get her can't get McGee. There was no way that Mike was going to get him that time because when he catches that ball and he's behind that baseline, 
and digging hard, straight steal. But Sosha, when he caught the ball, really had to straighten out and to throw as high, and McGee is in. Well, that means they've stolen three out of four today. They were one for four in the first two games, so they're making up for it. Of course, as they walk Jack Clark, it gives us a chance to remind you that twice this year, the Cardinals stole eight bases in a game. That's right, eight. Ocho. They stole eight against the San Diego Padres, and they stole eight against the Chicago Cubs. So and I, McGee at second with one out. You know, that's the one play, too, that's really embarrassing. I mean, having played the position, I mean, uh, it's a test of a man's speed against your arm, and if you lose, you just flat out lose. Nobody, you can talk all you want about pitchers don't help you and pitchers don't do this, but it's a stolen base, and as a catcher, you just feel rotten. The crowd is wondering about who's going to come up, Van Slyke or Sedano. Here's your answer. Cesar Cedeno, the super baby for thousands of years ago, it seems, when he came up with Houston. And now the, the grizzled veteran who was sent over from Cincinnati to St. Louis and turned out to be a godsend. So Cedeno facing Honeycutt with two on and one out in the fourth. And Whitey trying to blow the game wide open now with a right-handed bat against Rick Honeycutt. Cedeno, as a Cardinal, hit 434. Pickoff play. Dodgers had a refresher course in the off day in Los Angeles. They had all their pitchers out there working on that pickoff at second. They're just trying to hold them close to get a possible play at the plate. The ultimate is to pick the man off, but the idea is to cut down the lead. Sacks bird dogging to the bag. Big chopper to third. Madlock on the bag, and that's all he's going to get. But they get the force play. It's very hard in front of home plate, and Madlock really had to wait for that ball to come down, and lucky to get that one play. He's happy with that. He comes sliding in just the second after. So Terry Pendleton will be coming up. I realize it is in some respects a useless number, but then again, when you think about it, it sums up what's been going on. The Dodgers have made 25 throws to bases, either the first or second, just to give you an idea of the pressure that the Cardinal base runners have applied. And the Dodgers expected it going into the league championship series. But 25 throws to the bases, and we're only in the fourth inning. Line drive, all Honeycutt's glove, and he underhands to Brock, takes a header and makes the play. What a good play by Honeycutt. He stayed with that, and I mean he took a nasty fall, but he was going to get that out. Good hustling play. Almost knocked a syllable out of his name, and it's 4-1, and we'll be back. At Fifth inning, 4-1 to one in favor of the Cardinals. Here's the uh, reaction of Honeycutt on the ball hit by Pendleton. It comes right back, and I mean he makes a good play. Deflects it. And really hustles. Meanwhile, at the ranch, Jay Johnstone is the hitter for Rick Honeycutt. And the count 1-0, and oh, and he fouls it away. 1-1. One and one. Johnstone against Cincinnati way back in the 1976 League Championship Series had a series to really remember. He went seven for nine. He has been in three League Championship Series and a total of eight hits and 16 at bats. Foul back one and two. Johnstone however 
has not played much at all. He was the designated DL player all year. And he promptly hits a hopper to Tommy Hur. One away. Shortstop Dave Anderson. One down, and Dave Anderson, who walked and struck out, coming up. In the first inning, in case you missed it, Anderson walked. Landro doubled him to third. They pitched to Madlock, who grounded out. They walked Guerrero intentionally. And then Marshall looped out. Sosha grounded out. The Cardinals were off the hook and immediately responded with two runs in the first, two more in the second. And they lead four to one in the fifth inning under some gathering gloom here in St. Louis. The lights have been turned on as the sky gets darker. Weatherman had given us a 50% chance of thunder showers. And of course, as you know, it is not an official game yet. We were showing you that comebacker to Honeycutt so we can duck in the fact Sedano, who batted for Andy Van Slyke, is in right field. 3 0, oh, the count to Anderson. In there. Fouled out of play off to the right. No chance for Porter in the count three and two. For the Cardinals in the sense this should be a runaway. They're leading four to one. But they have stranded eight in four innings leaving the bases loaded twice. So even though he's leading Herzog is not too happy about things. And ball four, walking Anderson for the second time. And the fourth walk given up by Danny Cox. That didn't help quite his uh, <laughs> temperament. No. Uh, Kenny Landro coming up. Landro doubled to right and then fly to left. As Joe pointed out, the two doubles he had back in Los Angeles, when they tried to keep the ball away, he went with it. And he goes with it now to left center field and as Coleman makes the play. That's an extra base hit against any other outfield. That's the difference. That ball is an extra base hit. Here they turn it into an out. And I mean he still had some more gas to where he could have covered more ground. They keep I'm telling you it's just a different ball club we're seeing because this is what they did all year. They cut the ball off in the gap. If it does fall for the base hit, they cut it down to a single and keep the double play in order. Well, oh, that was a fine play by Vince Coleman, as he has done all year. And the batter will be Bill Madlock. Grounded hard to Clark, but it was a very big out in the first inning because it not only slowed the momentum, it gave the Cardinals a chance to maneuver. Remember, with second and third and nobody out, Madlock hit the first pitch to Jack Clark. That allowed them to walk Guerrero, get Marshall and Sosha. Ball two. And it also gave the Cardinals that momentum. And I hate to use the word in the presence of Herzog and Shane Deans. It gave them a psychological lift. <laughs> Whitey in one of those interviews. Whitey looked up here as if he just heard it. Yeah, he said, I don't get an inside guy's head. I don't know what you're talking about. Two and oh. That's right. So Anderson holding at first. Two plays now have shown you how close this game can still change. That's popped up. And it'll be Pendleton. The two plays, Sachs lined out with Marshall at third and the fourth, and Coleman's catch in the fifth. And it's still 4-1 St. Louis. The fact the Cardinals are putting on most of the excitement. This game is very close because the Cardinals have squandered so many men on base. They've had a chance to blow it out. They haven't. And uh, I tell you, in this big ballpark, uh, it's far from over. 
the play by Clark you pointed out, and that last one by Coleman, those go in, we got a squeaker. If Sachs hits that line drive anywhere but right at Tommy Herr, that's another run. So it is a strange game. You might be inclined to think, boy, the Cardinals are running away with it, but we've got a lot of baseball left. A lot of action and not that many runs for all that action. A lot of base on balls, too. And the question, too, is will it continue? Will the home team advantage stay alive in the league championship series? The Dodgers winning two in Los Angeles. Toronto winning two in Canada. Kansas City coming from nowhere to win last night. And the Cardinals leading four to one in the fifth inning today. Game half over. It's taken us two hours to get here. And nobody's in a hurry to go anywhere as Carlos Diaz will pick up now for Rick Honeycutt. Right. Carlos Diaz working on Daryl Porter who was walked intentionally and then doubled in the third inning. So Daryl one for one. Hitting 286. Flinched on that. Good pitch. Good breaking ball. They still play him to pull. Not quite as far over but Anderson is short is over pretty good and Madlock wide at third. They still here you see it. They expect him to pull the ball. And as you notice, Diaz always pitches out of his stretch. One and two. Normally, you'll see Diaz for an inning, maybe two innings at the most. His longest stint once this year, he went five innings. But that's a rarity. Two and two. You know, I always I'm happy to see guys do that. They feel better. That's the way you should pitch. But I often wonder, who do they check when they come to the set position? Who are they looking at? You know what I mean? Yep. You know what I mean, Vern? Yeah, I got you, Vern. Triple <laughs> ain't he cute? <laughs> two and two. Four runs, six hits for the Cardinals. One run, three hits, and two errors for the Dodgers. A throwing error by Bob Welsh trying to pick off. Vince Coleman at second base. Big play. And then a throwing error by Sosha allowed another run. Check swing. It wasn't a big one. And now Sachs has to wait and go to Diaz because Brock had already left for the ground ball. Greg Brock ducked because he'd been low bridged by that one. Porter's uh, kind of a half swing. Now, watch when Sachs gets it. He starts to throw it and whoops. Now he's got to get it over Brock because Brock has to go down right over his head. Most first basemen say that's one of the more difficult plays. You have to find that bottom line. How far do you go for a ground ball in the hole? When do you go back to the bag and when do you go after it? And we've seen a lot of first basemen have a lot of trouble making that decision. Oh yeah. And here's Ozzy. Ball one. Fly to right and walked intentionally. 0 for 1. I like Dick Stewart when he was over at Pittsburgh. He said, I'll take my chances on the ball coming off the bat, and I'll be at the back, but I'll catch it coming back in the outfield all the time. <laughs> Dick Stewart. One ball and no strikes. In there. One and one. The bottom three of the Cardinal lineup with Porter, Smith, and Cox. When the Dodgers come up in the sixth, Guerrero, Marshall, and Socia. stop at second base. It looked like an off speed pitch maybe even one he was going to try and turn over a little and the only thing turned over was Ozzy's wrists. He really was way out in front of it. You'll get a good shot of it. He doesn't normally pull the ball that much but just barely fair. Jerry Crawford the umpire third and he's very emphatic with his call. Great position. So Ozzy at second base. And with one out, Danny Cox followed by Vince Coleman. Mike had to change the signs uh, with Honeycutt as we look at Basco trying to set up the defense. That's Hershiser behind him. Trying to key in on uh, the center fielder, Landro. And Lasorda is really uptight. He want to move Saxe over. So Danny Cox struck out and walked. Madlock shortens up at third. Fouled at the plate. On one.
Cox with a dozen hits in the regular season. And Vince Coleman on deck. Four runs, seven hits for the Cardinals, one run, three hits, and two errors for the Dodgers. Smith has a big lead off sack. Sacks trying to bird dog him a little bit and goes to the bag, but no throw. With a right hand hitter up, Sacks can afford to do that. He pretty much trying to fill up the middle anyway. Turned it over. Strike two. Uh, he's still chewing on the straw. Ozzie Smith, by the way, has stolen third five out of six times. And the Dodgers know full well they really have to watch him. Fouled off. For some reason, pitchers don't seem to watch the base runner as closely on second as they do on first. And most of your good base runners will tell you they'd rather run off second base and get a bigger lead. Well, to give you an idea, Vince Coleman has stolen third base 26 times this year. I mean, that's a full season steal in second for a lot of runners. Or a career for some of them. That was a fastball grip that he had, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's what he's going to throw. It's what he does when he's got that ball in the glove. And we looked at the grip that Diaz had. 0 oh 2. And as a one hopper to Sachs, who staggers, stays with it, throws him out. As we were saying, that's where he had to be to fill up the middle and hold Ozzie Smith. Otherwise, that thing is through. And they had just moved him over. And Lasorda, when you saw him motion him over, he was motioning Sachs uh, to get on over there and probably motion him, to, hey, you can hold him close, and that's where you're supposed to be anyhow. If you remember the key play in the first inning, Vince Coleman at second base and Bob Welch trying to at least drive him back to the bag, and he almost hits Paul Rungi, the umpire, in the head. That's how far he missed his target. The ball went into right center, and Coleman scored, and that was the beginning of the Cardinals. They picked up two, added two. They lead 4-1, and the sky is getting darker by the minute. 4-1. Just to go back to that play, uh, they had plenty of daylight, and usually the infielder, when he gets that much daylight, they've got the runner picked off. It was just a bad throw, but they they had a big, big amount of daylight there. Ozzie at third, two out, Coleman at the plate. Ground ball hit down to Anderson, and they're out of that. So they leave Ozzie Smith at third. That's another man left on, nine, and at the end of five, the Cardinals four, and the Dodgers one. <laughs> Oral Hershiser in the Dodger dugout with a rarity of rare, a bubblegum card of guess who? <laughs> Oral, you're bad. You know what? Fernando's got a great sense of humor. A guy asked me for a card, and of course, Fernando's kidding me about my bald head, and he's saying the sun, the glare, and all that, right? Mm -hmm. So when he sees the bubblegum card, I give him that. He said, give me one. So I give him one, and he says, no, I got to put my hat and sunglasses on to look at the bubblegum card. And he said in English. Oh, yeah, look at him. Look, he's checking me out. Look at him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at the two of them. They're really uptight, aren't they? Yeah, look at them. You can see the pressure down on the bench. See them, the glare? Yeah. <laughs> They're really agitated. There's not much other glare here. It is getting darker and gloomier by the second as we go to the sixth inning. The Cardinals leading the Dodgers four to one. Lights have been on for an inning and the sky very dark, but it is an official game for one St. Louis. Off speed, pull foul. So Pedro out in front of the change. I have never been more sure of anything in my life than what I'm going to tell you. I'm listening. Those clouds are not cerulean. No. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Guerrero walked intentionally in the first inning, doubled, and you can see very quietly without hitting any home runs, but he's having a reasonably good series, huh? Four for seven. Mike Marshall on deck. 
one of the great trades, one of the luckier trades, really. It works out well for one club, and nothing happens at the other end. April the 4th, 1974, the Dodgers traded pitcher Bruce Ellingson to Cleveland and picked up an outfielder named Pedro Guerrero. They didn't think it was that much of a deal at the time. He holds up. They check. No swing, says Terry Tata. Two and one. Danny Cox working on Guerrero Marshall Sosa. Danny has walked four, allowed three hits and one run, and is a little fortunate. The line drive hit by Sachs right at her. Otherwise, Marshall scores to make it 4 2. Landro's drive in left field and the great running catch by Coleman caused the Dodgers to come empty in the fifth. But both of those fall, and it's a different game. Breaking ball hit foul. And he hit that off the end of the bat. He's really compensating, I think, for the bad hand, regardless of uh, what anybody says, by starting that bat quicker, and he's going into it, uh, just kind of flipping it from uh, mostly arms. Remember his last time up at Dodger Stadium when he took the ball deep to center? I think he thought he hit it out, and he started a walk towards first. Right. But that's about the hardest and longest ball he has hit. He also has a bad right knee that has a brace on it. And the left wrist is taped. Otherwise, he's in great shape. <laughs> Three and two. Curveball. Mariano Duncan could not play today. He tried. Couldn't cut it. Take a look at that swing, Joe. There's Duncan as he kind of roots for his ball club. That was the last swing. You can see that was really not the good Guerrero swing. He's hurting, but he's playing. And, and that's what you have to ask a guy of his stature in this series like this. He's going to have to cut it out. And he hits Cox pretty well. He's 5 for 11 against Danny. 3 and 2. Breaking ball hit to left. Coleman came in and then goes back. The Guerrero hitting underneath that breaking ball. One down and Mike Marshall coming up. Marshall was a key out in the first inning that really slowed down the momentum that appeared to be building with runners at second and third after Madlock had made an important out. They walk Guerrero Marshall who is not a double play hitter. The Dodgers are hoping for at least a fly ball and he hit a little looper right to Ozzie Smith and then so she grounded out and the inning was over and the Cardinals came back and before you knew it they led four nothing. But like the bullfighter looking over the horns, that first inning with Marshall was the moment of truth for Danny Cox. 0 and 1. Changes speed so well, this big guy. Can't help but think that he's going to really blow it by you, and then all of a sudden it comes up at about 80, and then 89, and then 75. Changes speed well. Little ground ball to Pendleton. So two down top of the sixth inning and Mike Sosia will be coming out. Pendleton handling that easily enough. He's limping a little bit. He had a cyst removed on his right leg. And he was hurting in Los Angeles. He had it removed just before the second game and you see him kind of hobbling a little bit. In fact I think he's explaining to Jerry Crawford as he touched him on the knee just where the cyst was. He's not going to give you the strike anyhow, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Near associate. Grounded to first, fly to right, 0 for 2. Cardinals 4, Dodgers 1, top of the sixth. Off speed, ball 1. Just caught a glimpse of Hal Lanier trying to move Willie McGee and McGee was way back there. Mike doesn't have that kind of power in this ballpark that he can hit it over the center field fence. Very few people do. Oh yeah, he he at best has warning power, warning track power.
You talk about Danny being so big out there, standing on top of the mound and expecting everything to come up about 95. He's 6'4 and listed at 230. In shape. Off speed, ball three. Mike Sosha with Greg Brock to follow. Lanier, Rourke, and the skipper, Whitey Herzog. So there's that walk, which has got to bug Herzog. That's five walks given up by Danny Cox. In Los Angeles, Greg Brock gave the Dodgers a big lift against Joaquin Andujar in the fourth inning. The Dodgers leading three to one when Brock checked in and promptly checked one out. However, it's the old story. What have you done lately? Before Brock's home run in game two, Mike Marshall had hit each of the Dodgers' previous four home runs. Today, he grounded out, came up with a runner at third in the fourth inning and a chance to pick up an RBI. And like the young, aggressive hitter that he is, was way out in front of off-speed pitches and struck out. Ball one. That's a big deal, huh? That'll really get you thrilled. <laughs> Two balls and no strikes to Greg Brock. Jack Clark didn't say much, and you can bet he just said, get the ball over. Strike. Two and one. Brock didn't look like he was ready for that pitch. Hey, he quick pitched him. Yeah, right he really did. Brock wasn't half ready and took a fastball and a good part of the plate. Off speed. So you take the fastball and he comes back with a change and he was way out in front of it. Two and two. And not holding Sosia at first. And he's going. Off speed pitch is hit foul. So if you, the old story in baseball, if you want to give me something, I'll take it. And Clark wasn't holding, and so she took off and would have stolen it. Cox wasn't looking. He just worried about the hitter. And, of course, Brock with two strikes, he's got to protect that plate. He fouls it off. Clark is still behind him. Two and two. The pen is busy just in case. So the one good pitch he had, the 2-0 fastball, he was just about quick pitched and let the Express leave him at the stage. Five and a half innings, the Cardinals four runs, seven hits, and no errors. The Dodgers one run, three hits, and two errors. The applause in the background on the Diamond Vision screen in right field, Ozzie Smith recorded a backflip, much to the delight of the crowd. Carlos Diaz will be pitching and it'll be Willie McGee Tommy Herr and Jack Clark the Dodgers have stranded six and the Cardinals have stranded nine though St. Louis could have broken this game wide open but they have certainly given the Dodgers opportunities and the Dodgers still have three innings left McGee has walked single to right single to center and promptly bangs it to center, but Landro has a bead on it. One away. Second baseman. That'll bring Tom up Tommy Herr. Her. Tommy Herr has walked, homered, and struck out. One for two. The Cardinals with the great home record that they had, and we've already told you how they kill Pittsburgh here. Nine and zero. Oh. Actually, only three teams held their own here all year in either division. Cincinnati, Houston, and the Dodgers. And that's it. They split their six. Everybody else got hurt here. Jack Clark on deck.
Welsh Honeycutt and Diaz and it's been Danny Cox pitching the big one for the Cardinal. Tomorrow at eight o'clock Eastern Daylight Time game four Jerry Royce and John Tudor and remember the added pressure somebody said to Jerry Royce the other day your career playoff record is 0 and 6 the record for most losses in a championship series play he said well how about Dick Hauser <laughs> well Hauser won one last night and Royce is going to use that mentally to get himself ready tomorrow fouled away this is home country for Jerry. He's from right around yeah. here. Born here. Yep. Oh and two the count to Tommy Herr. Jerry Royce with a record of 14 and 10. And of course John Tudor the ace of the staff 21 and 8. They've already announced and it really is no surprise about the following game. Fernando Valenzuela will go against Bob Forsh. That was Fernando <laughs> leaving on cue. <laughs> I'd say he's like a puff of smoke. Someday you got to give him he has a little lariat and he makes a loop on it and he can lasso almost anything with it in motion. It's incredible. He could take it on the road. One and two. Ground ball, fair ball. And Tommy Herr is going to have another extra base hit. He has three doubles and a home run in the league championship series. Once again, it's just inside the bag. You'll get a good view of it. He really pulls it. Breaking ball. Madlock has no chance. Jerry Crawford, no doubt, right there in great shape. And you see him. Fair ball. The Cardinals today have eight hits, three doubles and a home run, and three stolen bases. And it's going to be a high four for Jack Clark. They'll walk him intentionally. And that's a lot of intentional walks. Two, three. I got five. right five it is and then of course you add one to Guerrero uh, there have been a half a dozen and Lasorda has thrown that straw away that was indeed the last straw I think when Welsh threw the ball into center field in the first inning that was the end of the straw superstitions Every, I never had any but a lot of ball players have had them oh wow right fielder and now Cesar Cedeno who came up to hit for Van Slyke and hit into a force play in the fourth inning checks in. And he swung at that first pitch when he came up there and hit that uh, hopper to Madlock. He's an aggressive hitter. He was also swinging against Rick Honeycutt. Uh, we'll see now what he does against Carlos Diaz. Two on, one out in the six. Four to one, St. Louis. Remember, the Cardinals have already left nine. Strike. Funny game. If the Dodgers get one or two breaks, it might be four, three, or even tied up. And if the Cardinals had one or two hits, they could have run away with it. It could be ten to one, St. Louis. Easily. And one to Cedeno. Turned it over. 0 oh and 2. They're playing so wide at the bag with Cedeno hitting it. Clark really has himself. When you look at Whitey Herzog's crew cut. I asked him today. I finally had to ask him, Whitey, why do you have a crew cut? And he told me I don't want to get messed up in play by play with it, but <laughs> it's a pretty basic answer. Why? 0 oh and 2, the count to Cedeno. Don't have to comb it for one thing. Her at second, Clark at first. Got him. Throw down to Brock. And Sochi, I think, was going to argue about Sedanio interfering with him on the swing. And then at the last minute, he said, okay, he was swinging legitimately and entitled to it. 
as third baseman Terry Pendleton. Here is uh, the strikeout. Now it's an I'll be there kind of play. And you see that Soche really went down on one knee. I'll be there. The fact that uh, you give the sign to the first baseman saying, if I get the ball, you'll be there. And it's simple as all that. Now, they were playing very wide at the back. They're doing it again here. Two on, two out. And Terry Pendleton, the batter, grounded out, hit back to the box, fly to left, 0 for 3. He is at first base. That seems mm -hmm. strange to me, Ben. Uh, so Daniel, I could understand it, but he's way off the bag. Pendleton, not. I don't know if he's that much of a pull hitter. No, and especially if Diaz throws that screw jeep down and away, you think that if Pendleton does hit it, he'd go with it the other way. But so we'll see. It's going to give Clark a chance to get down to second in a hurry. And the outfield is fanned out straight away. They're giving him the line. They're pinching the middle. Fastball, and it's hit foul down the line. So Diaz started him with the screwball and then came back and tried to surprise him and did. Pendleton was very late swinging the fastball on the count 0 and 2. St. Louis, boy, what a great tradition. They've been in 13 World Series, winning nine. Six times this proud Cardinal franchise has won at least 100 games. 0 oh and 2 the count to Terry. Ground ball to Anderson. And he'll beat Sachs. So the Cardinals continue to drive their manager a little to distraction. They've left 11 men in six innings. And it's still a ball game. 4 to 1 St. Louis. We'll be back after these. At his familiar station, he rarely leaves that area. Manager Whitey Herzog. We were talking about, we finally had to ask him about that crew cut. And he said, I had long hair. I used to have a crew cut when I played. And I, I had not only a cowlick, but I had two sticking out in the back. And no matter what I would do, they would stick out of the bottom of the hat. He said, I even had to go and get some of this fancy jelly stuff to put it on. And finally, one day, he said to my wife, I've had it. I've had, had it with long hair. And he said, I found the same barber who used to give me, and he calls it flat tops. So three years ago, he went back and got a flat top. And he looks more like a drill sergeant at El Toro in the Marine Corps. But he's the, a rare breed as Sachs takes ball one. How many crew cutters come to mind immediately? Hank Bauer. Yeah. And Moose Garin. That's it. They all use the same tire irons <laughs> to comb their hair. <laughs> Tough guys. One and oh to Steve Sachs. Walk and then came up with two out. Marshall at third and hit a line drive, but right at Tommy Hur. Otherwise, the Dodgers have picked up a run. Right. Len Matuzic comes out on deck, and Ken Howell is throwing in the Dodger bullpen. So Danny Cox could have a dozen runs, but he only has four, but it's enough to give him a lead. Strike. Well, the Cardinals have left 11 men in six innings. The Dodgers have left six. There's Len Matuzic. Two and two. Breaking ball to the whole base hit. So Sachs has six hits and 13 at bats against Danny Cox, plus that line drive out. He hits him very well. And Cox now will be pitching to Len Matuzic. Matuzic led the National League in pinch hitting last year with a 417 average. He even had three pinch hit home runs. And Whitey Herzog might make a move. He's heading for John McSherry. wonder if there was something about maybe an injury he's going to find out about uh, between innings Mike Rourke the uh, pitching coach was talking to uh, Danny Cox I think that that's what's happening he's got Ricky Horton and Todd Worrell in the pen if they want to hook him and there's Mike Rourke Mike was talking to him between innings and now Whitey's out there with McSherry as a witness yep they brought a hook 
Out he comes. The we'll be back. Four to one Cardinals. Whether Matuzic was acknowledged or not. So Cabell is batting. Now I'm not sure if Matuzic has been used up. He was not announced to the crowd. So there is the question. Well, Lasorda said to the umpire, well, what do I have to do to have my pinch hitter acknowledged? Or whoever the man in the on-deck circle is. One ball and no strike. And he said, usually the umpire looks at you and you gesture or you yeah. nod. You say, yeah, that's right. my man. And I didn't see that happen because Herzog was interested in changing an injured pitcher. A chopper to Smith. They go to her late at first. So Cabell is aboard on a force play. But it does leave you a little bit up in the air, that technicality about acknowledge as to whether the Dodgers do have a left-handed bat on the bench and Len Matuzic or not. Tommy Hurt got clipped by Sachs on that play. Uh, Ozzie Smith had to wait for the ball. It's a high hopper, as you can see. And Sachs gets down the line in good shape. Now, I think Ozzie thought it was just going to be a force, and right there is where he got clipped. And nothing wrong with that slide. A strike to Dave Anderson. Anderson playing for the injured Mariano Duncan has walked twice and struck out. All of those at bats were against the start of Danny Cox. He was really, really leaning. I was saying to myself, I don't think he sees him pitching. All of a sudden, Cabell got. Look, look at here. Watch how long he waits. Look, he's still there, and there he comes. He really was out there a long time. That'll cut his lead down a little bit, I'll tell you, because he but left his shoes with that one. Meanwhile, the pitch of the plate was another strike, and they count 0 and 2. One out, Cabell at first. Four to one, Cardinal, seventh inning. Pretty good pitch, keeping it inside at the thighs. Cox in six innings, one run, four hits, five walks, one intentional, and three strikeouts. little foul off to the right and out of play not only has he got Cabell cutting down his lead he had him break him back he's got a good move Horton we double check to make sure because you know for all you know it get down to the very end of the game and it could be a deciding play Matuzic was acknowledged so Cabell hit for Matuzic Two and two. On deck, Kenny Landro. Four runs, eight hits, no errors for the Cardinals. One run, four hits, two errors for the Dodgers. Cardinals have left 11 men in six innings. High bounce it a Pendleton. He'll have to hurry and does. Got him. Good play by Terry Pendleton because Anderson runs well. Fine play by Terry. That can be the most frustrating play in the world to play on AstroTurf, that high hopper, and you know the guy can motor down the line. You have to wait for that ball to come down. You can't go up and get it, and he gets him in pretty good shape. He's got a strong arm. Good play. Danny Cox had a little stiffness in his elbow, which he's had his last few starts, and that's why they made a quick move. There's Kenny Landro hitting against a left-hander. Now back. Landro doubled to right. Flied to left in the third, then came up with Anderson at first in the fifth inning and hit one up the gap in left center. But a dazzling catch by Vince Coleman took an extra base hit away and probably an RBI. So it is still four to one St. Louis. Line drive base hit and that will get Cabell in cut off by Van Slyke. So Landro I should say Cedeno playing for Van Slyke and it is four to two St. Louis. So Landro is two for four with a base hit and a run batted in. And here comes Whitey again with Bill Madlock coming up. They're going to go to the right hander. Todd Worrell has been down there. And Tito Landrum will go into right field for Cedeno. So now, since it is a two for one switch, 
you will put Landrum in the number nine spot. And Todd Worrell will go in Andy Van Slyke's original spot, number five. Mark's announcement. <laughs> he puts a lot of juice in it, doesn't he? And that's just a promo. Wait till the fight. Holy mackerel. He had me on my edge of my chair waiting for it. Glorioski zero. Marv Albert, that'll buy Marv, baby. Get a little enthusiasm. Now, <laughs> Todd Worrell going to work on Bill Madlock. Tito Landrum is in right field, and the Dodgers have cut the lead to four to two. Four runs, eight hits for the Cardinals. Two runs, five hits, two errors for the Dodgers. Worrell, hard thrower. Fastball, fouled away. His father and younger brother are here. Came in for this series, talking to him. And, of course, their proud brother and proud uh, father. And Todd was just talking about his pitching. It gives a lot of credit to Fregosi. He says, when you get there, you got a good fastball. Don't you pitch any different because you're in the big leagues. And he just threw that with 95. 0 oh and 1 to Madlock. 1 and 1. He sounds fast. He sure does. When you can make that glove that Porter's using pop, because that thing, you can sleep on it. It's a pillow, and he's making it pop. You have to throw it and throw it hard. And that was another 95. 1 and 1. Todd Worrell is from Arcadia, California. That's not too far away from Dodger Stadium. He went to Biola University. Oh, what an arm. One and one. Fastball hit to Tommy Hearn. So the Dodgers get one. One run, two hits, one left. And at the end of six and a half, Cardinals four, Dodgers two. We're going to the bottom of the seventh. It is four to two in favor of the Cardinals. And the Dodgers now go to Ken Howell, their fourth pitcher coming out of the pen. Diaz did very well. Two innings, two hits, and nothing else. Howell, in the words of a baseball player, has been snake bit. Every time he looks up, something freakish occurs. 0 oh and 2. And it has gotten him down. So much so that after pitching so well, he suddenly hit a stretch where he's allowed 13 runs in his last 13 innings in relief. That is being snake bit. Trying to avoid a bird bite right now, and the count still 0-2. Tell you, if you were scouting him on just three pitches, you'd give him high marks. He threw a good hard fastball, sharp breaking curveball, and then two strike count. He came high and tight, and all he Porter could do was foul it off. Well, he's been clocked 95, 96 up in there, fouled away. Dodgers feel he makes a great compliment with Tom Needenfuer. They're both similar, although Needenfuer has one other pitch that Howell doesn't have, and that's a split fingered fastball. Ground ball to Sachs. One away. Cardinals four, Dodgers two. Shortstop. Strange Hard game. Lead. And if you've been with us since the outset, you well understand. Had the Dodgers made one or two defensive plays, it would have been closer. Had the Cardinals come up with one or two hits, they would have blown the Dodgers out of the water. But it's still 4-2, Cardinals in the seventh. Cardinals have stranded 11 men in six innings. Failed to leave a man in the second inning because her homered before the last out. A drive to center to Landro. Two down. This is one of those coulda, shoulda games. Yeah. Right fielder, If you win it, you go back and you say, we should have won that easier. Right. We didn't have to struggle, blah, blah, blah. And if you lose it, you say, boy, we could have won that game. That's right. Here is Landrum. Tito in the number nine slot. Hard slider for a strike. You know what's incredible about Tito? You see him going the game late. He has not committed an error this year and has committed only three errors in his six year career. Three. Pretty good man with the leather late in the game, huh? And not doing badly with the wood. One and one. As 
has a one hopper at sacks. So the Cardinals go quietly, really, for the first time today. They go out in order. And at the end of seven, the Cardinals four and the Dodgers two. Eighth inning, four to two Cardinals. Guerrero, Marshall, and Socia against Todd Worrell. Guerrero walked intentionally, double to left, and flied to left. One for two. Fastball. Tell the truth. You need a radar gun to tell you Warrell's mm -hmm. got a good arm. Mm -hmm. No way. You measure him with a BB gun. One ball and one strike. Even though he has hurt, and even though he does not have his full swing, and look at that, the mileage on Warrell's pitches. Guerrero has been walked four times intentionally by Herzog. In the free game. One and one. High fly ball. Started back was McGee, but now he comes in for it. You know, it's a good sky up there, and I want to tell you something. I've been in baseball a long time, and it took Nobi Kawano, the clubhouse guy, to explain right to me here, high here, sky. What he said. Very seriously said, a high sky is when the ball is going up and you're looking at it and you don't really know at the apex whether it's going up or coming down. And he's right. He's absolutely right. I've never heard it explained like that. And it's a tough thing if you don't know if it's coming up or coming down. You know, eventually it's going to come down. Yeah, eventually. Well, this is a reduction to simplicity here. Todd Worrell humming a 95 mile an hour fastball and Mike Marshall trying to hit it to Illinois. Oh and two. Marshall looped out doubled and grounded out. The other two ahead of them Dale Murphy and Juan Samuel each struck out one hundred and forty one times. <laughs> Did he rear back and fire that one. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why he twirled his arm. It should be loose after that one. One ball and two strikes. Fastball hammered to left center field, and that's going to hit the track and bounce against the wall. So the ball is in play, and Marshall has a stand-up double, his second double of the day. So Mike is two for four. The Dodgers are hoping, and for good good reason too that Mike could eventually Mike develop Wilson. into their answer to Dale Murphy he is that kind of a player the so Marshall doubles with one out and here is Socia grounded to first with the base loaded for the last out in the first inning applied to right with Marshall at second and walked in the sixth inning He lifts a pop fly to her. You can see to underscore what you said about Marshall, Ben, uh, the ability and the potential. That fast uh, double that he hit, that fastball was clocked at 91 miles an hour, and he pulls it in the left center field. Yeah, he's got he's got all kinds of power, and he has learned to hit his power like Murphy. He can go to right center and take you deep. That's an interesting contrast, but of course it shows you why the Dodgers were leading 2-0 coming into this game. The Cardinals today are 1 for 11. That's why they've stranded all those people. Interesting too. You got first base open. Now keep in mind it's 4 to 2. This is a tie run. Brock is a home run hitter. Sacks the on deck hitter is not. And they've changed up to strike out Brock twice. Ball one. He Look. got. He doesn't have that good a change up. It's going to be strength against strength. And if he does make a pitch that he can handle, it's not going to be down the groove unless it's a mistake. And Duhar, when he served up the home run, he got a slider up a little bit. And that was the ball Brock hit out. Hit foul. And I think he got it on the thumbs and cracked the bat. He's checking it. No, it's okay. You can't let him tie you. 
if you miss, you're going to have to miss way inside, way outside. You're going to really have to work lanes. It's tough for Warrell because uh, he's a power pitcher. One and one, the count to Greg Brock. Marshall at second, so Brock represents a tying run. This really is as close as the Dodgers have come in the game right now. There is a very light sprinkle of rain, just a few drops. Jeff Lottie down in the pen. Oh, tough pitch. Knee high inside corner. Brock didn't think so at all. I tell you, the last two pitches have been like that, and that's real pitching because he, if he gets the strike, it's going to be where you said, and if he tries to hit it, he can't handle that pitch for power. And it was 94 miles an hour, just to add to it. And that's about as rough as they come. Two and two with two out. Marshall at second, eighth inning, 4 2 St. Louis. And head to head, eyeball to eyeball is Ted Todd Warrell and Greg Brock. In the dirt, all the way to the backstop, Marshall to third. I was interested to check one thing about this ballpark. When it goes to the backstop, you can't go very far. It's only 50 feet. The big room is in front of the dugout, so there's no chance for Porter to get that one. He was trying to throw it on that low inside corner, and he missed completely. There's no way. He just turns around and almost comes back to him. Right. Remember the old days in Forbes Field in oh, Pittsburgh? Hey, don't even bring that up. How I knew far you were. was that from home plate to the backstop? A block and a half. A long distance I've call. seen guys score from second base on that before they put that screen in there. Yeah. They I could, think it was over 100 feet. Oh, they could outrun me. I couldn't run the pass ball. I'd say, oh, no. Yeah. So this start. is only 50 feet. That makes the game a little bit easier for the catcher. Ozzie Smith reminding him, don't give in to him. You can't give in to him. Sacks the on-deck hitter is a big guy. Marshall bluffed down the line. Warrell to the windup. Fouled away. Two out, top of the eighth. Cardinals four, Dodgers two. Marshall 90 feet away. Brock trying to get him home. Marshall's just got to stand there. Three and two. Warrell's got to throw a strike. Marshall starts in. It's a strike. It's all over. So it's, it's between Brock and Warrell. Little fly ball. Back a third. Slicing down the line. Going into foul ground. Great catch. Oh, what a play by Terry Pendleton. Magnificent play by Terry Pendleton. And how he didn't trip and kill himself on the mound, I'll never know. He just outruns that ball. Look at him. He's digging hard. And how he's able to do it, I'll never know either, man. Over the mound and was on the disabled list for weeks. But this time he made maybe the saver of the game in foul ground, and what a play. Tremendous play, and we talked about how much room there is here down the lines, and also the warning track comes all the way around, so Terry's feet really told him he still had room to go. And remember, he had that cyst removed the other day, so his legs are not 100%. And it was one of the rare times we've seen a curtain call for a defensive play, but the crowd made him come out of the dugout and take a bow. And it's a big crowd, 53,708. Now, officially in the book, they tell you capacity is 50,300. That means standing room only. And they're seeing a dandy. Here's Vince Coleman, a strike. Don't forget the WBC featherweight championship from Birmingham, England coming up on Sports World. And more baseball tonight, of course. The American League, game four in the league championship series at Kansas City. Hit down the left field line, slicing, foul, foul ball. I tell you, Coleman was late in leaving home plate. It was as if he was hypnotized by that ball. Had it been fair, he might have been slightly embarrassed. With his speed, it has still have been a double, I guess. But he hung around the plate a little extra long. They talk about his speed. He's almost getting in the same category of speed as Cool Papa Bell. When they talk about Cool Papa was so fast, he could get in bed before the lights went out. Watch Coleman. He doesn't break that fast. He kind of watches it. Think now he goes. 
I saw a line about him said he's so fast he can play tennis by himself. <laughs> that's really singles. Boy. Yeah, boy, it didn't miss by much. You know, that's really the difference in the game. What's been going on with Coleman and McGee? Strike. No, that'll do it. They are now four for eight with three runs scored between them. And of course, that's a difference in the game. The Cardinals so lead 4 2. Strike out for Howell. He's gotten four in a row. And Willie McGee coming up. In case you're not keeping score, you wonder about the Dodgers in the ninth. They are due to send up Steve Sachs, then Howell's spot, and Dave Anderson. They have already used Jay Johnstone, Len Matuzic, and Enos Cabell. He was late. 0 oh 2. Whitey Herzog needs three more outs to pick up his first win in this league championship series. And he sees Coleman and McGee go down back to back. Second baseman Tom Hur. It's really a domino effect. Coleman gets out of there. They start out ahead of McGee. And he sees breaking balls, get two strikes on McGee, and they get it out of that strike zone, and he has a tendency to chase it. That's the scouting report, and he how followed it to a T. Well, here is Tommy Hur. He's had a big day. He walked in the first inning, homered in the second, and doubled in the sixth. Sacks might have been deflected by Howell. A one, two, three inning. And so at the end of eight, the Cardinals four, the Dodgers two, and we'll see about the Dodger batters. Cardinals four runs, eight hits. Tommy Lasorda has found another straw to chew on. He had given up on it in the first inning. That's a great picture. It's the only thing you've ever seen him really bite that doesn't have calories. <laughs> four runs, eight hits, no errors for the Cardinals. Two runs, six hits. And two errors for the Dodgers. The Cardinals have left 11. The Dodgers have left eight. And Todd Worrell will be pitching to Steve Sachs, Terry Whitfield to hit for Howell, and then we'll see about Dave Anderson. The eighth inning, of course, the closest the Dodgers came. And then they were jammed on that great running catch on the foul ball by Brock and the catch by Terry Pendleton. Sacks walk, lined out, and singled. All of those at bats were against Danny Cox. That's another thing. You look at Danny Cox who is an off-speed pitcher and you finish up in the gloaming against a guy nothing but smoke and he's backed up by Ken Daly and Jeff Lottie in the pen. 0 and 1. Breaking ball. That's the first one he's thrown and he threw it for a strike in the count 0 and 2. I think it's the first one that we've ever seen him throw. <laughs> Good one. Fastball hit down the line. Fair ball going in the corner. Sachs is on his way for two, and they will hold him there. So Steve Sachs keeps the Dodgers alive with a double to right. Looked like he was fighting off a tough pitch. He really didn't swing at that. Watch how he just puts the bat out there one-handed. But the, the ball was thrown so hard, he hit it on the fat part of that bat, she really shot down the line. He had two strikes on him, he was protecting the plate, and he came up with a base hit. Now Whitey is coming out, may make a pitching change. Looks like he'll have Ken Daly to come in, and we'll see now if Whitfield will be called away. You have, among others, Candy Maldonado and Steve Yeager. Interestingly enough, we have a new National League Championship Series record with eight doubles by both teams. Five of the Dodgers' seven hits have been doubles. 
And Ken Daly will be facing Candy Maldonado and Todd Worrell will go back to the dugout. So Maldonado will be hitting for Whitfield. Quality for Terry Whitfield, number 20, Candy Maldonado. So that means the Dodgers have used Matuzic, who never did bat, Cabell, Johnstone, Whitfield, who never got to bat, and now Maldonado. And Ken Daly will pick up. Don't forget the American League Championship game. Game four at Kansas City tonight. And then the Dodgers and the Cardinals will be rolling all over Bush Stadium tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Jerry Royce 14 and 10 against John Tudor 21 and 8. Don't forget the fight on Sports World immediately following. Daly is basically a two pitch pitcher fastball and a big breaking curveball fastball is the pitch he leans on you just saw the curveball it's a big breaking curveball. Candy Maldonado started in the John Tudor game and Maldonado plied to right struck out and then electrified and shocked and surprised many with the bunt. You remember the bunt in the sixth inning of the first game fielded by Pendleton and Terry's throw hit John Tudor. The so Maldonado now comes up with sacks at second ninth inning nobody out and the Cardinals leading 4 2. Maldonado hit only one hundred and twenty five against Cardinal left hand pitching and he did not have a run batted in against them this year. So they really did a number on him and they're going to try and do it again. Out away. Down in the Cardinal bullpen, Daly is backed up by Jeff Lottie. Pinch hitters for Lasorda now would be Steve Yeager, Bob Baylor, and the injured Mariano Duncan. He has used up everybody else. One and one. Nelly came over from Atlanta in a deal that sent. Ken Oberg's fell for a minute, went blank. Ground ball, backhanded by Pendleton. Throws the line, sacks the third. Pendleton has done it again. What a play this is. Nosey even looked him back and look at Ozzy pointing and here's a going to be a great view. Look at this reaction. What a play man. Huh. He has come up with two gold glove plays. The last out on the eighth and of course that's a double and puts the tying run at second base easily, otherwise. Easily. Easily. The so one out a runner at third and Dave Anderson the batter. Strike one. If it's worth repeating as we look at it once again. He says he uses the Ozzy Smith theory of hitting. If I don't get any hits, nobody else is going to get any. And he just proved it right there. What a play. What a sensational clutch play. I mean, right in the jam. He's 0 for 4 with the bat and a good 4 for 4 with the glove.
Four to two Cardinals in the ninth inning, one out. And they're hanging on thanks to the strong ten fingers of Terry Pendleton. One and two. Boy, has he come up with a couple of dandies. But the ball by Maldonado changes the whole game. It makes it 4-3, and Candy's at least at second base with nobody out. Two and two. Daly's throwing pretty hard. That play by Coleman in the uh, fifth inning on Landro was a big play, but it really gets lost by comparison. So Sachs is at third, one out in the ninth. Cardinals four, Dodgers two. You never can tell from Whitey's look, but you usually can tell from Lasorda where he is. Lifted foul and out of play. Lasorda had to get the feeling he was watching Greg Nettles again. Oh yeah. Play. Right. Two balls, two strikes. it up in foul ground to Jack Clark. So the Dodgers are one out away from losing game three of the league championship series and game one of the three to be played here at Bush Stadium. And while they hold a meeting on the mound, I'd like to remind you the executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman, the producer of today's game, George Finkel, directed by Harry Coyle, and the technical director, Richard Sansevier. Tomorrow at 8 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, Jerry Royce and John Tudor as the Dodgers try to go 3-1 to one, and the Cardinals try to get even. And they are on their feet at Bush Stadium Landro checks in at the plate. pitcher. Landro is two for four. Can't beat the roar of the crowd, can you? Let me tell you, the crowd tells oh, you everything. You might as well it. just, they tell you ball, they tell you strike. Yeah. You talk about a symphony. It is beautiful music. Just listen.
this week's NBC Light Beer from Miller Player of the Game has to be that Bantam Rooster third baseman wearing a Cardinal uniform, Harry Pendleton. Light Beer from Miller is happy to present a check for $1,000 in the name of Terry Pendleton to help fight multiple sclerosis. We'll be right back in this madhouse at Bush Stadium right after these messages from your local station. 